Hey everyone, welcome to the April 2020 Q&A. Uh, I am joined by Ian Hank. Hi. Michael Damiani. What's up? Michael Huber. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for watching. That's it. And Daniel Blood. Hello. Um, we are kind of low on allies today, but we're not low on questions. Oh. Our first one comes in from Alexander. Hey, allies. According to the Easy Allies lore, why did the Dark Prince of Nerd Media leave his land? Did he become a king and move to the capital, or was he chased away by, ang by an angry mob? Or did he try to conquer the land of common media, but fell in love with its light princess and spent the rest of his life raising their dusk children? Combination of all of them, probably. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that's pretty good lore. Yeah, I like them all. Uh, the, the Dark Prince left uh, to become king of a new island. Ooh. What's the name of the island? So you won't tell anyone. Oh. Do you, it's, a, uh, it's a secret. You, you think he's actually got some new job? Oh, no, no, no. But, <laughs> That's where I thought the metaphor was. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like I check your metaphors here. Check your metaphors here, Bloodworth. I was like... You're going to give people the wrong idea. Kyle's uh, sitting on the, the shores of, I forget the place, waiting to sail to the Undying Lands, but the... Uh, the boat's been held up for a little while, so yeah, like Numenor uh, or some shit. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> well, what, what are the the white sails or whatever? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, the coast town. I forget its name, but yeah, he, he's waiting on the boat with the elves, but uh, the elves are held up right now. So the Grey Havens. <laughs> thank you, chat. Yeah, yeah. Kaz is chilling in the Grey Havens right now. The Dark Prince did not get his favorite game entered into the Hall of Greats, and eventually got fed up with it. And decided to leave his land. I, I I think I know. It's like Final Fantasy IV. He's like Cecil. He has to climb the mountain to become a paladin. <laughs> he won't be a dark prince any longer. He'll be light. I'm the warrior of light. All right. I'm wearing a tank top, chat. It's hot um, in here. Should My apartment is very hot. I don't know if you get to see the uh, comments. Something about Ben being out of sync. Yeah, I, okay. I just tried to fix it. Let me know if it works. It's sure. in sync on my side, but... Yeah, it looked in sync to us, but that's weird. I think it's going out through OBS, though, yeah. so it might be a weird issue. Yeah. yeah. I, chat says we're good now. Okay, okay. awesome. Next Thanks, question James. comes in from James. Greetings, allies. What are your favorite and least favorite GTA and Saints Row games? Personally, I find Vice City to be my favorite GTA game. Good choice. And Saints Row 2 to be my favorite Saints Row game, and GTA 5 and Saints Row 4 to be my least favorite, although I still really enjoy them. Vice City and Saints Row 2 understood what it took to create sandbox games that reveled in destruction and fun. Vice City was a glorious step up from GTA 3's innovative framework and reveled in the 1980s like no other game before or since. Then in Saints Row 2 you get to hose down suburban houses with excrement and participate in an abundance of lunacy before the series got too superhuman and carried away with itself. GTA 5 may be a huge and elegant and stuffed with activity, but I feel... The characterization is secondary to its scope when the sandbox worlds are smaller. They are more focused and memorable, I believe. Both studies, Vice City and Saints Row prove that simplicity and stupidity are best for sandbox games. Um, so yeah, favorite Saints Row and GTA games. GTA 5 for me, no question. GTA 5, I love it. Uh, favorite Saints Row, probably two. When Saints Row got really out of control superhero bombastic i i dipped out of that franchise i like one and two for being like street stories which which is the crazy. Saints, which i actually is really like saints row three a lot i think three is my favorite yeah which is the one where they're singing in the car at the beginning they're singing that, like, that's either three or four i can't remember which one because i haven't played through any of them i just played a little bit of one at an event and that was that seems just like awesome i was like yeah. man i really need to play through this one and it's a it's a it's like a popular song too i forget what it is but um for me though uh yeah it's tough between vice city and san andreas but i think like i like the music maybe in vice city more but i think i like the game of san andreas better so i'm gonna go with san andreas for sure yeah i i totally see where you're coming there from there with damiani i think just the vibes of vice city are so strong and the performance is so good and the music's so good that it edges it out but I totally see what you're saying with San Andreas. So tough between those two. Yeah. 
Saints Row 3 is definitely the one I played the most, I think. Burt uh, Reynolds in Saints Row 3. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they really had some fun with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. GTA games aren't really my thing, so I don't know. Played a lot of the OG top-down ones in high school, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't actually... Yeah, there, as, I'm kind of a, in Ian's boat, so I'll just say Space Station Silicon Valley. <laughs> nice. Which was by then before they started doing the GTA stuff. Huber, uh, Chinatown Wars love? Love Chinatown Wars, as, especially... As you praise that game so much. Yeah, yeah uh, the coolest video game representation of stealing car stereos. <laughs> You like go in with the little stylus and yeah. have to like unscrew it. It's I had so to do cool. Gameplay for that at Game Trailers. Yeah, I remember that now. Cool game. Our next question comes in from Varun Ketchwaha. As a part of the Easy Allies, what what is one thing that brings you the greatest amount of happiness? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that right there. Yeah. <laughs> Having my cat come on my streams and take over. No, that's that's. That's a fun perk of working like this. Um, yeah, the, I think the thing, I'm, the, this whole situation has made me realize how, like, even more. I mean, I knew it already, how much I just missed being in the studio with everyone. Like, when we got that studio and was able to, like, work there more often and work in person with, with all of you, that was, like, a, a highlight of my week was coming in for that. And it being so long since we did that, it kind of, like, sucks. It's kind of, I know we found like workarounds and stuff, but like, it's kind of like sucked a lot of the joy out of this. And it's just like, man, really need to like, I'm looking forward to the day we can go back in there and stuff. Cause it's like a little, it's a kind of a bummer. <laughs> I think my favorite, uh, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. Hebert. Yeah, no, you go ahead. Man. I think my favorite thing is uh, anytime anybody, um, says like, hey, I wouldn't have tried this out were it not for you. And now I love this series and I went and I played all of them and you know, just wasn't on my radar at all because that did a lot for me as a kid. Like the whole reason I got into games media is because people like Greg Kasavin and Jeff Gerstmann and Jeff Green like made me fall in love with so many games through their words. And so anytime I can do that for anyone, uh, it just makes me feel really, really, really good. Yeah, definitely, like, that, and just, like, interaction with everyone, whether it's on Twitch or, like, a review or an episode or something, just, like, having conversations about games with you and, like, the patrons mm -hmm. is the best. Totally. Yeah, the, I mean, the times that we just have fun and laugh and, like, or chilling out together on streams and whatever <laughs> are so much fun. But like, we've also gotten a lot of really meaningful messages from patrons um, and, and, and Twitch people and stuff that just like, I mean, they vary, you know, just from like, Hey, thanks for brightening my day to like, you know, Hey, I was in a dark place and you guys helped me get out of it. Like that kind of stuff. It, it's like life changing for me. Like, it's just so such a positive thing yeah <laughs> twitch people <laughs> there's like a child just screaming in joy outside my window so if nice. you hear that that's what that is <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i guess i th like it my brain thinks of it in two dimensions because like definitely like the most like joy or euphoric or whatever is like well, when we have some crazy long stream and we're just all together doing something um like a fundraiser or marathon or something like that um and then yeah but then like the most satisfying is you know when you when you put together some big crazy project like that that don't skip this week where it's like there's a million different parts and somehow like you manage to get your brain to put it all into something that people actually enjoyed <laughs> in the end of it uh shout out to blood for that don't skip Wonderful job. And it was very fun to be part of that process. I still have to it. watch it. Yeah. yeah, it's super good. Very informative. Yeah. Well, it was fun, too, because, it, you know, like, Ben is the producer on that show. So it was like, 
one of those those rare times where uh, I actually like get some notes back on something. Yeah. Because uh, Brandon will like tell me a few things here, but they're usually like just obvious typos. Like Ben is like, this needs to be better, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it was fun where I was like, I'm not sure about this word. And Blood is like, it's got to be in there. And I'm like, you know, it's a very Blood with word. I, I hear you. And so, yeah, it's fun. It's um, and what's great about Blood is he doesn't really need, you know, any grammatical help, right? And so you can really just get into the more meaningful stuff of, of like, oh, let's expand on this or whatever. So, yeah. Awesome job, Blood. Our next question comes in from KY79. I don't know why I said it like that. Hello, allies. As we start transitioning to the next console generation, hopefully at the end of the year, I was wondering what are your favorite soundtracks from this last generation? You can also count the Switch if you want. Breath of the Wild, everybody's kind of the rapture. Oh, yeah. Persona. It's a lot of time to, to even try to. Wrap uh, yeah, your head seven around. years. <laughs> Yeah, Persona. Yeah, yeah Persona is a huge one. I think my top two are Persona Five and Near Automata, for sure. Near Automata. Got the Doom. Near oh, finally the Seven remake. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. I always keep forgetting. I was was near this generation. It was a PS4, Xbox. It game. ran like a PS3 game, but it was Near Automata. Was automata. automata. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like so. I'm like forgetting now. No, yeah. I know. <laughs> like where was, was it? Uh, then yeah, the, that the persona and that, and then well, Xenoblade um, Two chat is saying, which is also true. Yeah, Xenoblade yeah. Two is really good. I mean, FF Seven Remake is. I'm still waiting for that like CD uh, they put on sale, whenever that comes, because I just keep hearing new music. Uh, I heard uh, a different track for something I hadn't heard in my normal or hard playthrough while trying to wrap up the platinum trophy, and I was like, wait. Where'd this come from? Uh, the very specific scene that you can you can get with Stern Wayne. I was like, oh my gosh, still <laughs> still got good music, uh, and, and then obviously uh, shout outs to, to Final Fantasy XIV's soundtrack. Yeah, keeps keeps delivering. Oh yeah, Witcher Three, Bloodborne. Yeah. I'm really glad Chad is saying Celeste. Chad, I'm glad we have you around. You're bringing Celeste, up. Dude, yep. Celeste. Celeste is very good. Uh, Infamous Second Son. Really good. Animal Crossing. I, I might have to make a video about this because Animal Crossing, every song gets a different song stuck in my head. <laughs> like each hour I like I stop playing and then I'm like, why do I have Oasis stuck in my head? And then I'm like, oh, because of this in Animal Crossing. Sign our wild hearts for sure. Can I just say the KK Metal song in New Horizons is like way better than it has any right to be. <laughs> if you haven't heard it. Omar rocks that one in his house. Uh, Outer, question... Wilds. Outer Wilds. Outer mm-hmm. Wilds. Death Stranding, good music. Yeah, mm-hmm. Death Stranding has very good music. Good score and good soundtrack. Next question comes in from JD Incinerator. Hi, allies. A Plague Tale Innocence was almost completely snubbed from Goody Awards besides Huber mentioned in his personal games of 2019. But the story deserves way more love than it got, so what prevented A Plague Tale from getting further commendations from the allies? My, my hey, personal man. take on this is i think with goaties just as a result of human error right there's always going to be something that you don't bring up in exactly the way that you want to but i think in the review and i think in frame trap and other things we definitely were very positive of a plague tale yeah. um i feel like we all mentioned it in the goaty discussions it may not have won anything yeah. but i mean it came out in a good year it was a lot of good games but I, I feel like a lot of us that played it praised it yeah i mean i definitely have reservations on things right like i definitely feel there are areas that it was held back in in terms of you know how believable things unfolded you know like the the, the character interactions are phenomenal but then you start getting to like what the heck is going on in the plot and you're just like i don't know if i buy into all of it <laughs> um, so it, it, it's got a weird arc. Um, and then, yeah, some of the gameplay also, you know, like it, it's, it gets, it gets a little strange in those dynamics as well, but it's also, you know, at the same time, it's also like a game that, that does stick with you. It's a game that goes go beyond, uh, what a team of that size generally is expected to be able to produce. 
Um, so yeah, there's a lot of praiseworthiness there. I think it falls into one of those frustrating categories. And we always have these games every year with Goaty where it's really good, but it's not quite good enough to be constantly brought up. And it's not, it's not even really an insult to the game. It's just, you end up focusing on other things that, that are maybe more at the forefront of your mind. Totally, like a Plague yeah. Tale 2, I feel like, is going to like work out those kinks, Ben. Mm-hmm. You know? I just feel like it was, yeah, and like you were saying, Blood Earth, just a little rough around the edges. It'll be like set it's... in 2020. <laughs> nice. Hey, Ian, did you see that Deadly Premonition 2 July, baby? Yes, dude. Don and I have, have a month and a half to finish it. <laughs> finish yeah. one. Somebody was actually concerned that like you're not going to finish it just because you haven't played it since quarantine. Yeah. I, Don and I, I have a way to stream my Switch now, so um, Don and I could play it some more. Nice. Uh, this week we've got to play Mario Maker 2, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. then after that, we should get back into that. I didn't watch the new... I don't know if it was new Deadly Premonition 2 trailer because I was afraid of spoilers, so I didn't watch I, it. I just saw that as I was getting ready for the Q&A. Uh, yeah. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I, I got to finish it. the first one before I watch trailers for the I, second one. I, I imagine they could cut together a trailer that basically oh, just leaves yeah. you yes. like, less knowledgeable about yes. the yeah. game. That's, yes, you, exactly. You play the game and you know less about the game <laughs> than when you start it, I feel like. Dude, Deadly Premonition is rising. <laughs> our, next, very, dude. our next question comes in from Mike Hook. Hi, all. Longtime fan here. Let's define yeah. the word retro when it comes to video games. I'm not sure I care for the term. I mean, I guess it's better than calling them a game old. Hmm. So maybe I am okay calling a console retro. Yes, that makes sense. But calling a game retro feels weird, as most games are still relevant today. Is playing Mario Brothers 3 on the Switch considered retro? I don't think so. Now, I'm playing Mario Brothers 3 on an original NES console hooked up to a 13-inch CRT TV that I could see being retro. I'm definitely overthinking this, or am I? Am I retro for living through the olden video game times? But I'm still here playing video games. Am I still relevant? I don't even know anymore. Have a nice day. <laughs> I mean, yeah, something can still be like, I guess, relevant. But if newer things have come since, like, like newer technologies, newer, newer aesthetics, newer just designs, it inherently makes the the the, the previous thing retro by definition so i mean i would call any like nes anything from like the 8-bit 16-bit era retro no matter and like if you made it like a new indie game that comes out we call them like retro style or like you know something like some phrase or adjective to like describe it like that so i don't think relevancy in the word retro like, i don't think that should discourage you from i don't think it discourages me from wanting to use the phrase retro i don't, I don't see any negative connotation between that something can actually be retro but still be relevant now yeah Is I don't... ps3 retro so that that's the thing like <laughs> yeah, th- for 3d it gets harder i feel like honestly ps1 and and ps2 3d stuff i would like i personally feel comfortable saying that's now retro stuff like everything from onward definitely looks more polished you know the, the, the very like the bad like there's not a lot of lighting techniques like the low polygon count for the the models very like basic environments things have just like overshadowed that but i think it's i mean it's it's written video games at least for the average person i think it's easier to say like 2d games especially sprite based games you, like you can delineate or differentiate between those two yeah as we get like further and further along it's kind of weird because like even like Final Fantasy VII Remake, the, the texture loading stuff, there are points where it's like, I see that in my mind. I mean, it's a negative, but my mind associates that that looks retro now because like it's not loading the full texture. It looks like PS2 quality stuff. It's kind of, it's kind of weird how it infiltrates your mind like that. But I mean, I'd phrase it like that, honestly. Yeah, to me, it's it's just a descriptor, not like a value judgment word. There's no negative connotation to it, for sure. But yeah, if it's not 4K, it's retro. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, We're not 4K. It's retro. Yeah, I don't think there's any negative <laughs> connotation to it. That. But I also think retro as a classification just kind of implies like a general industry shift away from something. Like, 
to illustrate that, like a memory card feels retro. Like a PS1, PS2, blocky GameCube memory card feels retro because we've generally moved away from that style. In the same way that like a floppy disk feels retro because we've improved that format. Um, there's also, there's also, uh, and maybe this is just my read on the word retro, but to me, retro also kind of carries with it that sort of, um, you, you like, you want to like, uh, not covet it, but it's, it's like, um, a desirable, like intentional kind of a thing. Like if something is retro, it's cool and you're you're getting the thing with the memory card or playing it on a CRT on purpose mm-hmm. because you want that retro vibe or you want that retro feeling. Whereas when something's just old <laughs> or outdated, right. that's just bad. Sure. Retro is like, oh cool, I wanna, you know, retro vibes. You know what I mean? I wanna save in blocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of blocks. Oh I make me think of the yeah yeah i think there's just a sense that it's uh yeah that it seems detached from you know what's currently new uh, like a new game right like a like a new triple a game wouldn't look like that anymore uh and i think we're it's strange because i feel with the indie space we've gotten to a point where like a lot of pixel based games and stuff now like you know like you go back to celeste you know we just brought up celeste like that you know that's one of the best games of that year and so like the idea that you're detached from this aesthetic is kind of gone out the window at this point <laughs> so it's it's a strange thing our next question comes in from asbo's uprooter good afternoon allies i hope this month finds you all maintaining good health both physical and mental last month during this q a i, spe- I specifically asked kyle for his earliest memories and or impressions of the rest of you we found out that you mostly confused him. Anyway, this month you're all back on the hook as I ask you for your earliest memories and or impressions of Don Casanova. Wow. I remember talking to him about uh, movies. Back to the Future, Jurassic Park. Definitely one of the uh, earliest encounters with Don is just talking, talking film. But... Uh, yeah, and I th- it was at Game Trailers days, and it was when I was interning. It was like Ian and Don and um, Santo. All the editors kind of back there would just talk about movies and games all the time. And like I do, I would insert myself into the conversations. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, how I got to know Don and Ian. Don? Yeah, was... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead, Ben. Don um, was very conserved reserved not conserved Don was very reserved during the game trailers days and so i feel like he wasn't i don't know like as talkative um right. and i just didn't know him as well but the first distinctive memory i have of him is somehow we got on the topic of mortal Kombat, and he just transformed before my eyes like he just turned into this little kid and you could <laughs> see it like he had a glow in his eyes and he was just so stoked to talk about Mortal Kombat and it was awesome and it got me all excited and that's actually something that Don and I have kind of carried over since the game trailers days where every once in a while he and I will get into this nice hyped up Mortal Kombat conversation which is fun yeah I can't remember my first actual interaction with Don my the first thing that stands out though is that um back at game trailers the uh, early into uh, pop fiction, the original editor James Ondry had to uh, was leaving uh, and taking up another job somewhere else, and he had talked with he came, he called me in to talk with me about it, and he basically told me like hey like I've been actually he shared a bay, editing bay with Don and he was basically saying. Don showed a lot of interest in this, and every time I was editing it, he'd come over and stuff and like be very interested in this, and so uh, I, I think you should take the next one and you should work with him and stuff. And I remember it was for the the Final Fantasy VI, um, the Kaiser Dragon episode, and I remember, I just remember it being so very easy to transition into working with Don on it. Like he he got it immediately, 
and he was always asking like the, the right questions the, the the questions i was like expecting to have to explain and he but he would like be proactive about being like so you this this and this i'm like yeah like okay you you get you get how this is because my, my, my worry was james put a lot of like a, his personal touch into each episode there are a lot of like editing quirks that i initially didn't add, like weren't in my directions and then he showed it to me i was like oh these are actually really good let's keep doing this and then don kind of put his own spin on it he like preserved the 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 style of it but also started to do his own thing as well and i really liked how in that first like working with him that first thing like the ideas he was like giving me for stuff uh i, I like i, I like I, like i liked his like passion for this and then he also was like hey when are we gonna do a mortal Kombat episode i was like oh yeah we're gonna do a mortal Kombat episode so i remember when we did the rep the ermac and in, in reptile revision episode he was like he had such he did like the capture it for it and everything he's like no he goes i got this like this is <laughs> like I, I love this i'm like oh okay don all right um but the best thing uh i always share the story the, the 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 biggest thing i saw from don because there are a lot of like people who didn't get to know don very well at during the the early uh, the pre like defy game trailers days and one of the things i saw that showed me how talented and like how much more there was to don than like even like i could have imagined was him storyboarding and coming up with like a like basically a lore for the an episode for something to do with the angry video game nerd and we wanted to use him for for an episode and don just came up with this idea i I told him the premise and don fleshed it out and just wrote this thing and storyboarded it and knew how to shoot it and i was like i was because i thought we're gonna shoot this later in the week we can't shoot this day we'll have to tell him the schedule and don came back and no no no, i got it it's all good to go i'm like are are you sure you don't we could you, you can do this i was like okay dude i trust you like let's try this out and it was just like bam and i was like yo don i was like you have some hidden talents here man uh you you should not be just like editing videos, man. So, yeah, that always stood out to me. It was like Don was like destined for more than just doing video editing for sure. Yeah, Don's a genius, and he's humble yeah. to a fault almost. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's weird because I'm trying to remember a specific thing. Like the the early game trailers days were weird because there were so many editors that you like knew the ones that you were in a bay with and like then you met a couple of the other ones and then some of them like i didn't really talk to all that much and don was always there but i you know and i thought he was really cool and nice uh but it wasn't until like time went on you know that you just kind of i just kind of got to know him and love him yeah so it's like he's always been there kind of yeah Uh, i mean that's the problem i was having i i don't know if i know when Don started. Yeah, you know? I don't know. I don't know if he was there before me, after me. <laughs> I think he, was he might just have been there before me. Living in a closet at Viacom. I would, I would guess like... like around 2010 would be my oh, you best think guess. So? Yeah, I think 20, 2009 or 2010 would have to be it. He okay. was definitely not... I don't think he was not there when I started in 2008 in the in the first building we were or the fifth floor, whatever floor we are in, yeah. in like the main building. He wasn't there at that time. I don't remember him I, uh, there. I remember when we moved to the motel, he was he was there, and it was after we'd moved in. So I'm going to say, like, 2009 was probably the earliest, maybe. He is, like, the janitor from Control. <laughs> That's funny. But like Ian was saying, yeah, it's, like, well, particularly when, you know, some of us started, like, me and Damiani, it's, like, you, you get there, and, like, you're this tiny fish in, like, this huge pond, and there's so many people that, like, yeah, like, there's very few people when you first start that you could like identify like this is the moment I met this person because everything's new, everybody's new. Yeah. Um, and then you were just so focused on like proving to people that you can do a good job that like, a lot of your interactions are just like, you know, with, with the editors in particular, are just like, okay, give them the stuff that they need and approve the video and, you know, then get Shane mm-hmm. to come in and well, approve and the, the video. The editor, video editor side, was you know a whole different show like we had a different boss we had different everything like we didn't yeah. report to you guys like we had nothing to do with you guys like we would bounce between like i would cut some key and peel stuff and then i would cut some game trailer <laughs> stuff and then you know yeah. like yeah after we became spike digital which yeah you came yeah. after that so yeah yeah Gosh, i remember all that but um but yeah even in the early days it was just like a very like 
you know, you have your job and they have their job. And, you know, it took a while before we had enough of those like parties and things to like actually get to know people a little bit more. And, you know, kind of the nature of uh, editors just here in town, like there are a lot of people that just would kind of come and go as needed. Yeah. Um, so they weren't, I, you know, like some of our initial frustrations and even like some of the uh, mix ups with like comparison videos that people thought that we were like conspiracies or, <laughs> you know, it's like, no, oh, like gosh. this guy just isn't a video game guy. He's just an editor and he mixed yeah. up a set of tapes because everything was on tapes and that's why it was mislabeled. That's it. That's the whole controversial yeah. story. <laughs> Those were always fun, innocent. But yeah, no, I, I liked, I, I did, I felt like once we were in that, the, the, the motel though, and like the editing process, like kind of got revised. Yeah. I felt like it was fun to interact. Like you interacted with everyone. I feel like every editor back there, like at the time, like knew everyone, like, like you hung out back there people would like talk and stuff it was like kind of like a fun like club area back there oh you yeah know, video, like a video game club and everyone was like invited and stuff though there were like always people on the floor who were, like i could tell like we're not like either happy at what we did or found it a, a nuisance or something um i remember one time i was playing a game and someone had to i will not name them came by from another department i was like can you just like play that with headphones on i really don't like the sound like they were saying it was really annoying and i was like oh okay I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, because there were a couple yeah. of like marketing people that were like right there next to Brandon and like yeah, social media people. They were too. just like I could always overhear their conversations. They were like never very happy. <laughs> they were stuck <laughs> on the same floor with us. I was like, uh. just Justin and Jumbo and I would literally call our bay club two four five and one time we had a fog machine in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, it was I mean, it was definitely a different vibe and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Don, uh, yeah, I, I kind of like, yeah, I, I wish I had like known more about Don sooner because like that came out towards like, what was like, that was like 2013, I think it was one. It came out around mandatory update. I feel like that's when like really we started yeah. seeing Don's personality. I was like, man, we should have like found, but at the, at the same time, it wasn't until that error happened where personality stuff was allowed it was really hard to, like it would have been almost impossible to get like anyone else who wasn't part of the editorial team to be able to like make their own show um sure you, they would have oh, to like yeah. do it under the radar and against like you know the policy and just like put it on their own time and put it out there and hope like it did well enough that they were like yeah you, that's not your job but like that did so well that's now your job so congratulations so it would be a big risk yeah, and yeah. even so much of our job was like straight gameplay videos and like those just like kind of like very like by the book interviews where like all you're really doing is putting a mic in front of the developer and like tell me about your game and that's like God, that's to, the whole interview pretty much. I used to yeah that used to make E3 sorry we're going on a tangent they used to make E3 so freaking boring uh, like having to just go there and just like the like interviews like here are the questions you're supposed to ask or do a dev interview but like you're holding all the stuff so like you can't even like focus half the time on like what's you know what's being played because sometimes you have to be a weird angle and stuff just to, like get the framing right it's like and you're holding it extending it all the way out and it's like okay this is tiring and like i'm trying to watch the screen it's like ah uh. thankfully like we have plenty of time to come back and rewatch the stuff so i could be like okay let me watch what i actually like shot so i can know what was being shown here but yeah it was the, the much funniest, different style <laughs> the funniest is when it was a translated interview and the person that you're interviewing would be going on and on and on and then the translator would just say something generic like, "Yes, he hopes everyone enjoys the game." And you're like, <laughs> "There had to be, there had to be more there." Right. There had to be something else. And so many E3s too. Like there is at least a couple of E3s where like I didn't play games. I didn't play any games because we were there to get footage of games, and it was better to get footage if I had the developer play the game yeah, than yeah. me play it. That was always the trick is you always, if you did a dev walkthrough, you always like said, hey, could you play the game since you know how to play it so the footage looks good and like we get like, like it will be better looking than IGNs or something like you. So that used to be the mentality back then. It's like, oh, game journalists don't know how to play. They're terrible at games. So it's like, well, we don't want to like, we want the best looking footage. So who better to play than the people who know the demo inside out and can just like do, you know. I mean, or otherwise you'd have to like be a specialist site who was there playing it over and over again. Like, I'm just there to cover this game. So I'm going to play it like 10 times. Now I can make like an expert video on it. Like that, yeah, couldn't really 
have it. You had to have it one way or the other, and it was kind of frustrating. Anyway, Don's the best. Don's the best. Don changed Don. all that. Don. Long Don, story Don, Don. short, Ben's <laughs> or Don's the best. Hey, you can say I'm the best too. It's okay. Ben's the best. <laughs> Everybody's the best. Uh, eight bests. Eight Beyonces. Uh, our next question comes in from Ulf. What is your favorite comeback story in games? I'm thinking of stuff like No Man's Sky, a game that was a mess at launch, but the devs kept working on it. Now a lot of people like it. My shout out would go to Battlefront 2. No Man's I, Sky is tough to beat. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, No Man's Sky, I think, had the maybe the lowest low yeah. because it happened in an era where like social media is like at its highest potency. Like it just it's it's penetration vector is like just everywhere more so than 10 years ago when another certain game flopped horribly. And yes, Final Fantasy 14 OG uh, was a disaster, but I think it was also mitigated by the fact that you also had 13 mixed in there. So it wasn't, it's like self isolated thing, but like it's redemption was really good. And I think it actually took probably, that was more surprising to me to see 14 turn around because I thought Square Enix was gonna say, screw this, move on. Um, Whereas like No Man's Sky, I feel that uh, sorry, Hello Games, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. they had a, like they wanted their rep. They're like their newer develop, like they're indie. They're like we need our reputation to be salvaged if we have any hope of staying in here. Regardless of like Sony jumping bailing on us, we have to try and do something to fix this. Yeah. Otherwise, we can't make another game ever again. Or watch show our the faces. watch the Internet Historian video on No Man's Sky. It's really good. I put those two in maybe? fourteen. Yeah, Diablo three, right? Diablo, Diablo three. three had a big turnaround. Yeah, yeah. isn't that another big mm-hmm. one? And yeah. Sea of Thieves. I said to Sea of Thieves that bad though at the beginning. It, it was just, just didn't, lacking. It just yeah. didn't have anything in it. Yeah, everyone thought that the the beta was like, oh, it's a beta, and it's like, oh no, wait, that's just the game. Hmm. I have to give. Uh, personal shout out to 14 just because i've been getting back into it and i was really worried at first where i'm like i don't remember what's going on it's gonna get hard to get invested and some of the story beats are so good and some of the characters are so good that it's really easy to slip into and have a good time and some of the main scenario quests are really well designed where you actually really have to pay attention to the mechanics and i I don't know it's just a a remarkably impressive game and it has been for a long time and i yeah it's good, there's, it's good and game. they're still not satisfied with what they've done yeah. uh in june july whenever the next patch comes out the big update is they are they are completely redoing a realm reborn og realm born <laughs> uh they're they're, they're wow. stream they're streamlining it they're like they're cutting like they're trimming the fat they're 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 revamping it so it's like a, they're gonna make it a smoother experience to go through and then they're adding flying, the, making OG zones, like you can have fly, flying mounts in there, which is like something that was not asked by the, the game's director or producer. It was staff in their own time did it as a passion project. And so, to the fact that like some people weren't prepared for it, wait, wait, this is getting pushed out. What, where did this come from? So like the sound design isn't going to be correct right away because the sound team didn't know what was happening. <laughs> because it was a secret project and so they said like shortly after we'll we'll have all the sounds working correctly because we weren't expecting flying fly, the old zones will become flyable and it's like yeah the the fact that they took those they're still taking criticisms to heart about hey it's a pain in the ass to catch up to the new stuff if you start from the beginning man it 10 years ago, or seven years ago this stuff was good then but it's aged, man you got to fix this and they're like yeah we'll do it like we'll spend a whole patch dedicated to fixing this stuff up. It's like, whoa. Can't you just jump potion past it, though? You can. I mean, but at the same time, if you've got a, you're skipping over a lot of like fundamental things. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. If you're not familiar with MMOs, it's kind of like not recommended. But at the same yeah. time, you're also skipping the story. And the story is one of the things that people tell you you should be playing the game for. So it kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> yeah. I like this comment that Huber hasn't said a word since they logged in, and they're wondering if you're doing the speed looped footage trick. Uh, Wait, what? Uh, I've been saying things. From yeah, Huber talked. Speed. He said Diablo three. Yeah, yeah. He, well, he I mean, they might have just yeah. logged in two seconds ago. Uh, hmm. Speed hype. Uh, Tell that wildcat behind the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> he can see us. Fourteen hype. 
Our next question comes in from Alex. Greetings, allies, all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Makes me think of Watchmen. Let's play a game of Would You Rather. Would you rather have an open world Halo or Ratchet and Clank? Halo. Halo. Oh, open world Halo. I mean, that's kind of what I'm hoping for a little bit, maybe from Infinite. (laughs) Yeah, I love the... um... I love the planets in Ratchet and Clank. You know, mm-hmm. I know. I think I think it being open, one giant open space like Jack Two or something would would not work. I just like travel. Like, it, isn't it kind of open world then? If like each planet is its own thing. You know I, I think I, mean? it, I think they're saying more interconnected, like because the planets it, are it, still it. pretty contained. You know, they're 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 yeah, open yeah. for sure, but I think it's implying a different thing. Cool. Um, Team Fortress 2 wait Team Fortress 2 or Overwatch I think I think this open question world is, I think this question is Team Fortress 3 or Overwatch 2 I'm, oh I thought you were saying maybe, open world versions or of maybe it's games. just saying which do you prefer but Team Fortress 2 or Overwatch it could open be that world well. Overwatch would be pretty wild no, no, no. They're not all open world. So it's just making us between two different things. But yeah, it would be wild. Um, I, I don't really care either way. I don't so, have enough yeah, experience I'm to say. S- like, I'm going to... Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to fun I, with Team Fortress 2. Yeah, I really want to know what Brad says because he's had love affairs with both of these games so hardcore. Like, he... When Team Fortress came out, played it like a maniac. Same with Overwatch. So I, I really want to know what Brad says. Engineer for life. <laughs> oh my God, Brad Spy, dude! It was lethal. Nice. <laughs> spy is a very fitting, dude. One for him, yeah. Yeah. And you were heavy, of course. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, man. Team Fortress Two stream win. Yeah. Uh, Next Tuesday. Which would you rather have be remade as an action RPG? Chrono Trigger or Final Fantasy VI? Final Chrono Fantasy VI. Trigger. Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is perfect the way it is. Don't touch Chrono it. Chrono Trigger. It's perfect because the some of the, the cross the the team mechanic stuff like is what people are some people are su- suggesting for Final Fantasy Remake Two Part Two if they're going to do some gameplay changes to the battle system. Like they could take a page from like converting some of Chrono Trigger stuff into real time action stuff. It's like ooh. Blah. Blah. Yeah. But, yeah, let me yeah, let me throw yeah, this at you. Really... Let me throw this at you though. Action RPG Sabin, like it's so it's so good. It's so good. Now I just have that song from Seven Brides for Seven Brothers stuck in my head. I bet no one knows that one. I wrote that. No, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I honestly, I don't think I'd really prefer Sabin action did, yeah. RPG for either one of those, but. Yeah, Chrono Trigger would be the one that makes more sense to me just because you already had that step of moving the enemies on the screen and having them walk around and stuff. Um, yeah, suplexing a train in real time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But oh, see, that's oh. the thing. It's like turn-based kind of lends itself more to some of those crazy, flashy animations. I love turn-based. I feel like... But uh, I also love that 7, seven is a good balance. Yeah, 7 Remake had a very good balance. I think 7 yeah. Remake is like... This encouraged my wanting to see more of that style for sure yeah i like seven remakes combat a lot more than kingdom hearts is that weird or normal it's not weird at all uh XCOM style mass effect something can be weird and normal <laughs> or a metroidvania Absolutely. uncharted game <laughs> what, what are the options XCOM Sorry? style mass effect or a metroidvania uncharted game Metroidvania Uncharted. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. I feel like I we're kind of flooded with... with XCOM style games at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd love like a space. And Metroidvanias, to be fair. Yeah, a space version yeah. Of, of XCOM style game. But yeah, there's I've got my fix from that. Whereas it'd just be crazy to see like a Metroidvania style game of like Uncharted. <laughs> it's like. It's like the complete opposite of they what that game to, is. <laughs> yeah, they would have to fix the combat, probably. Would it be 2D and side-scrolling? Fix, fix it? No, it would be, it would be <laughs> more like Metroid Prime. Ch- ch- uh, change I mean, it. And, change it from your point of view. Fix it from my point of view. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, <laughs> Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter crossover or Pokemon and Monster Hunter crossover? Oh, what? Pokemon Monster Hunter was that would be great. Poke, Pokemon giant. Monster Hunter, call it that. Cutting off tails of Pokemon. I man, I still want to see Ryu versus Liu Kang. Badly. Yeah, it's like a dream, dude. Mortal Kombat Both Cross Street Fighter is speaking really to like my inner eight year old in right. such a strong way. And it just makes me hope that one of the six fighter pass characters for Smash is a Mortal Kombat character. Oh. So then you then you can have it Ken Ryu versus like Sub Zero or Scorpion or some shit. There you yes. go. Close as you're getting. I would love like the comedy that they would do too. Like imagine Dan and Johnny Cage <laughs> and like fucking Blanca. Yeah. Yeah, dude. They're both good though, for sure. Yeah, those are the best too, yeah. It, you know what? Blanca is a character that I would not be surprised if they made a guest character in Mortal Kombat. And he you know you know his throw where he jumps on and starts biting you, seeing that yeah. in Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Convert Snorlax into parts, says Ed Hendren. Yeah, that's oh the thing. God. I feel like if, I if really Pokemon want to Monster that. Hunter actually happened, like you would lose a lot of like it would somehow they'd find some way to make it way less violent. And so like I don't know, you'd be sticking them with like nets or something. I don't know. I think well no, I think that someone in chat said it, but I think that the the you would have Schmuckford said this. Pokemon would be your palicos. And I assume then you could fight them like in Pokemon, but they would be like non-violent side activity stuff. They'd be like your friend. You wouldn't hunt them. But I don't know. Oh, would you rather have a Castlevania game made by Moon Studios or a Silent Hill game made by Ninja Theory? <laughs> huh. Hmm. Wait, Moon Studios is... Um... Ori. Ori? Oh, yeah, okay. Silent Hill with Ninja Theory after Hellblade could be yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Initially, I interpreted that as a Silent Hill made by Team Ninja, which ah, uh, <laughs> also good, which yeah. would be a very different game. But yeah, Ninja Theory, for sure, Silent Hill, that'd be amazing. It would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I would be. I think that's what I would pick. They'd get the psychology <laughs> right, hopefully. I know oral audio. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Would you have rather have a CD Projekt Red make a Mass Effect game or Platinum make a Dragon Ball Z game? Oh God, Platinum Dragon Neither. Ball Z. Let's go. Platinum make a Dragon Ball Z Let's game. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> right now. That one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you fight, you're moving so fast, you can't even <laughs> see your characters on screen. That's what they do. Like We wanted to make it so you felt like you couldn't see anything because that's how it really happens. <laughs> So, like, don't feel bad if you can't catch the action with your eyes. <laughs> You're just like a Krillin. Now you know what he feels. You have to preload your moves, like, 45 seconds in advance because everything's going so <laughs> Yeah, fast. you, like, program a sequence at the start of the fight, and you just yeah. see if you got it right because it gets so You just so watch fast. it. <laughs> so it's like a puzzle game, actually. Yeah, right? you have to relax your eyes. <laughs> Would you rather have Rockstar make Deus Ex or id Software make Duke Nukem? Oh, Id and Duke Nukem, for sure. I think Id and Duke Nukem would be very interesting, for sure. I agree. Duke Nukem is the only thing from my past that I just want buried forever. Yeah, like, I'm like, I, it doesn't need to come back. <laughs> I'm so, like, I used to have a massive Duke Nukem poster where he's shooting guns, standing on bullets, hanging above my bed. I, I He's done. Like, put Duke Nukem... <laughs> Put him out to pasture. No, but, but think about what it did with Doom in 2016. Yeah. I just want to see them just completely just True. flip it upside down, right? They're not Damn just it, making man. another right. Duke Nukem game. It's like, oh, I, I like this character. It. Yeah, reinventing it. I like him. You're again. right. Yeah. Duke you know, Nukem, she, Duke Nukem by was? id, but you play as a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> who made the uh, the Shadow Warrior reboot? That was actually pretty decent. Oh, what is their name? What is their name? That. Yeah, I should know that. It was pretty decent. I just was looking at this not that long ago. They're, like, they're from like Chile, Brazil or something, right? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Now, You've convinced me, man. You've changed my mind. What is it? <laughs> look it up. Somebody look it up. Emails. Is it the 2013 one or the 2016 one? There, they, there was two of them. There was, yeah, they did Shadow Warrior 1 and 2. Flying, Flying Wild, Wild Hog. Hog. That's it. Thank Flying you, Shadow. Wild Hog, yeah. That that's a pretty solid game. Next question comes in from Michael Agnell. 
Hello, allies. When do you think we'll see the PlayStation 5? They so claim this like, year. The the form factor, you mean? Oh. Uh, uh, the, the question just says, when do you think we'll see PlayStation Yeah, 5? that's the... <laughs> I think we get an update for something PS5 related this in, in May. In May, yeah. I think we see the system in June or July, like the yeah. form factor. That makes sense. I bet we see like a game running on PS5 hardware next month. All right. Simple question. Uh, next one comes in from DRD7014, top of the quarantine to you allies. Uh, I've been on something of a nostalgia fix going back exploring games I played in my younger years and started thinking about pretty dormant the pretty dormant RTS genre. It's funny that while Age of Empires, Command & Conquer, and StarCraft stand out as some of the best in class, I find myself drawn toward more art- obscure t- titles like the three Star Wars RTS games, Star Trek Armada 1 and 2, uh, TA Kingdoms, and Starship Troopers, each bringing some elements of uniqueness to the format in varying degrees, but little is remembered of them. In Star Trek Armada, each unit is a ship slash station that have a crew complement for that race. If the crew goes from 800 to zero, the ship becomes derelict and any race could potentially take it over by transporting their crew from another ship over. There are many abilities that can play it with ver- within varying degrees, but I think this example should suit fine. I hope at least one of you has played the game. No, but it sounds really cool. I, I played play. it back in the day, but I don't remember it. I remember Same. the Star Wars one more. I didn't even know there was a Starship Troopers RTS. I gotta I play no that with Don, dude. No idea. I didn't know that existed, yeah. Stronghold is like my fave. I talk about Stronghold uh, Warlords, the upcoming one in Frame Trap. Out now. Here it's a good show. The Frame Trap's <laughs> out now. Warlords, alas, no clue when that comes out. My question was spawned out of this, and while I believe it can be strongly supported by the RTS example, it's not an exclusive effect. Why does it seem that cool features in games are not always innovated on but left forgotten? If there's something along this line that you could think of from your experience, I would love to hear it. Yeah, this is where... So the problem, to me, is that this is where the suits get in the way, right? Like, people have to pitch games. And a lot of times you go and you hear stories and people will pitch their game and they'll the suits will say something along the lines of there's not a market for that. And so that's why genres and ideas i think oftentimes fall by the wayside because they don't think they're going to see a return on investment yeah like how speaking of silent hill like silent hill 2 had like thoughtful story driven design choices and that just got left by the wayside for some reason games just don't do that anymore <laughs> that's bait that, <laughs> oh my gosh that's bait, that's bait. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Specific examples, it's tough. Yeah, I feel like I need some. I mean, Nemesis system. Nemesis. Is a good one. Yeah. yeah, that's an interesting one because it's not really in Left by the Wayside, but it's almost like it's almost like people feel like do they feel like they're copying it? You know, like well, we don't want to do what they did, so we won't touch that, even though other things will just grab right away. <laughs> I feel like Nemesis system, like, super good idea in theory, but at least my impression was people didn't feel like it, like, perfectly nailed it. Like, the first example wasn't, like, this crystalline perfect thing, so people couldn't copy it because they weren't sure how to get it right, maybe? I don't know. Well, and I think something like the Nemesis system, right, that's actually a really interesting example because I feel like if you're trying to incorporate the Nemesis system, that's a pretty dominant aspect of your game. Right, it's hard yeah. to just like include it as a little thing. It becomes yeah. kind of a focal point, and so I think it's it's probably harder to work around. There's been like forty million rumors, but the rumor was that they were trying to put it in a Batman game. The mm. Batman would adopt the Nemesis system. That'd be so that cool. makes sense. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, other games have had something that's kind of similar to it, but I want to see more of the uh, like sort of psyche system of Eternal Darkness. I think especially now with current technology, there's a lot of really cool things that you could do. Um, similar similar to that, Ben, uh, games have flirted with it, but like uh, Silent Hill Shattered Memories comes to mind. Yeah. Like 
-hmm. game that actually psychologically profiles you as you're right. playing it and then right. adapts to hurt you more. Absolutely. Uh, I feel like that it was basically a gimmick in Shattered Memories, but like a game that actually did that. Until Dawn tried to do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, Metal Gear was very similar along those lines. I feel like now, though, it, it's kind of, there's a little bit of a strangeness to it to where, like, you know, if a game went through and, like, read your trophy data or something, people would start getting, like, weirded out about privacy concerns. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, like, why is it looking at all my stuff? Ooh, Doki Doki Literature Club kind of does sort of this kind of stuff. Also, yeah, I want to make an FMV game with the allies like crazy. I actually wanted to shout out Doki Doki Literature Club because, uh, yeah, that was really good. Also, like a, a good example of, of the, I think the kind of the realm of what we're talking about. Somebody in chat mentioned it is Undertale, and the way that it messes with the player is also very cool. More stuff like that. It's very interesting. Frog fractions. And you know what they Frog got rid of that fractions. I always wanted more of, and we've brought it up over the years numerous times. Hmm. Warcraft 3 heroes, hero units. Yeah, I, I agree. Like I really like the, stuff. the hero system. I think yeah. that's also tied into like the problems RTS is having as a whole, but yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Love that. Torn Chieftain. I would just like a good remaster of Warcraft 3, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that would be all right. Have they that or updated that at all? Or? Oh, I don't know, man. I, the the parade got rained on. Yeah. Um, next question comes in from Michael. Have any allies been playing WoW lately? Any hype for the Shadowlands expansion? I know Brad was playing BFA, but I'm not sure how you felt about it. Thanks for keeping people sane with your streams. I subbed and have played, like, for 45 seconds. Sounds about was, right. Yep. Chasing, <laughs> the, uh, chasing the MMO dream of yesteryear there's just i don't know I, I i can't commit as i previously mentioned i've been getting back into 14 and i'm enjoying it to the point where it's like i don't need wow that's like that's how i feel right it's just it's just filling that void perfectly uh because i huber i think you and i both suffer from like constantly wanting the mmo vibe you know just kind of need in the background it. Yeah, and, and 14 has definitely filled that for me at the moment. Anyway. Sick. And PSO2 on PC next month. Ooh. Oh, right. So it's out on Xbox now, but it's still a little ways for PC. But have you been playing Xbox? I've been playing Xbox. I think I'm just going to... As I was playing Xbox, I was like... There were, there were some things that I was doing where I was like, I wish I could just... I just want to play this on PC. Like, uh, I can plug in a mouse and keyboard to my Xbox, but rather than do that, I think I'll just wait for PC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know Brad is question. interested in getting into that expansion, but I don't know what the status is. There's just kind of like a weird rollout with it. Next question comes in from... Oh, sorry, Huber. Didn't mean to cut you off. Or Damiani. Yeah. I haven't touched WoW since whenever... I tried playing it for a bit for whatever expansion it was. Uh, the one where they had the PvP toggle ability. Was that the last one? I don't remember what it's called. Uh, and then, yeah, like gave, I'm, I have no intention of ever going back to it. <laughs> Next question comes in from I Sanchez. When did you guys notice that Nobuo Uematsu is a genius? For me, it happened when I first saw someone, someone playing the original Final Fantasy VII and Aerith Song kicking in. My dude! <laughs> Favorite song of that game. It made me start to see gaming music in a whole different way. It even made me start to appreciate music without any lyrics like symphonies. Love and respect, and we will always keep supporting the Easy Allies. Okay. My first Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy IV, and Omatsu was the composer on that. Uh, there are just too many themes in that game that were like this blew me away like i i knew there were video games i played that had good music tracks here or there like an iconic theme or an iconic like level track but consistently throughout it was just like each track was just it it, it felt like they were trying to take something that was meant to be orchestrated and trying to cram it into this you know 16-bit style or you know super nintendo sound chip basically 
uh like the final fantasy 4 overworld like even like the the red wings team that plays when you're you're mm-hmm. when you're doing your first assault on the like, city i believe to get the first the crystal and like just just great team like it's i i feel like i mean the, there it's been superseded like bombing run like a similar style but like it's way better but i mean the character themes are really good like rose's theme is really good like it's like theme of love i believe the, the theme that kicks in when you so the best thing about it is when when Cecil and Kane defy the King of Baron. No spoilers, can't say what's up, but they defy the King of Baron, and the next morning they sleep on it and they're given a mission to try and redeem themselves. They're like, okay, you have one last chance, otherwise you guys are out of here. Sends them on a mission and they 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 wake up. You wake up, you go down the stairs, you meet up like in like the lobby area, and you both exit. And this like epic ass music kicks in, like, here we go. And the screen changes, like the scrolling text with this like amazing 2D artwork background, sprite back. And I was just like, whoa. I was like, holy shit, what is this game? This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I was like, okay, I'm like hooked on Final Fantasy forever. This is great. My, my first Final Fantasy was uh, seven. And me too. I it's understandable because I think people just want to highlight a lot of great members of any group, you know, whether it's musicians or artists or whatever. And I feel like people are kind of tired about hearing about how good Nobuo Uematsu is because he's obviously gotten a lot of acclaim and recognition. <laughs> but I say, I say fuck that because <laughs> even though he has gotten a lot of acclaim and recognition, like I have enjoyed this man's music for most of my life and i believe he is a true genius like i have heard some of these songs hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of times and they still get me going like i shout out the biggest shout out i could give to anyone um yeah damiani pretty much channeled me there as far as yeah final fantasy 4 being the you know the the big one where I noticed, um, even though I did play the original Final Fantasy as well, um, and probably like the music too, but uh, but yeah, I mean one of the things that's that's weird is like to go back, and, like put myself back in those shoes of like early two thousands and like finding out about things like orchestrated versions of those soundtracks, because it was a thing that was happening in Japan pretty much all along where they were doing concerts and putting out piano collections and all this stuff. And I had no idea until the internet became a thing. (laughs) And you know, you start looking this stuff up and like, all right, like I'm ordering, you know, soundtrack CDs off of eBay and getting things from friends and just like, yeah, just hearing that stuff with like live instruments for the first time was mind blowing. Blood. I don't know if, um, you felt this way growing up, but I especially felt this growing up in a small city in the Midwest where you would get really attached to video game music, but it was hard getting atta- getting actually getting physical versions of video game soundtracks. And oh, yeah. any, any time that I would go into like a super specialty store and they happened to have like a Final Fantasy soundtrack or something, A, it was always really expensive, but it felt like finding gold. And it was it was so exciting, and some of those video game soundtrack covers were so beautiful that those like once in a blue moon discoveries were just really awesome. Well, I mean, from my experience, you know, at least when I was a, a teenager and even a young adult, like it, I, that was not the way I could even get a sound. Like the only way I could get a soundtrack would be through Nintendo Power or like you know some Square Enix like fan or SquareSoft fan club, you know, where they would have you know, the Final Fantasy VI soundtrack CD for sale. But even that, I think, was, like, way too expensive for me to even, like, hope about getting. You know, it was... It was LimeWire. <laughs> it was before all that. I did not yeah. have internet yeah. until yeah. An, as a, an adult, so... Yeah, shout out to FF Tactics, baby. <laughs> yeah, it's, he also... Yeah. Everyone, if you don't remember, he also did Super Smash Brothers Brawl's theme song. Like when the, like they're like brawl kicking off like the collaboration, bring in like all the third party stuff, like Umamatsu composing that was just like so epic. Um, the one thing I always find funny, um, uh, I have a friend of mine who's like way more into like Square Enix and history and stuff than me, and we like I, I mean I love Umamatsu and stuff, and 
I just remember a conversation we had one time because he told me because I never knew this and I had to look it up just to double check because I wanted to be sure. I mean, they're right, but like, uh, I just want to make sure. Uh, apparently, Uematsu wanted to be a wrestler <laughs> for a composer. I wanted to get into professional wrestling. And like, <laughs> nice. I was like, where's this alternate timeline? <laughs> it's like composing music. He's like, he ends up in professional wrestling and ended up like in WWE or some crap like that. <laughs> He's like, Uematsu. He composes his own theme song, entrance song. <laughs> Can we Uematsu uh... and Suda tag team? <laughs> Can we just watch the original opening for Final Fantasy Tactics where they're riding in on the Chocobo? Just to like end this game. So Q&A. good. Yeah. It's just it's just tactics hype. on switch when yeah it's a good move just yeah. throw it on switch guys it's Lightning. on the phone do it um next question comes in from volkman hey allies i understand that only some of you are working full time for eza and i wonder what else do you do for a living feel free to use this as an opportunity to promote any video you'd like to promote love and respect from germany don's the only one with I... a actual other job yeah. Yeah, we're pretty much we're pretty much all full time. We're all full timers. Thankfully. Yeah, I, I think there's like some confusion that kind of stems back from our initial like Patreon concept. Because yeah. we didn't know what we were gonna be able to do, right? It was like we all thought we were gonna just get jobs and go to Jones's on tu- Jones's on Tuesday nights. Um but yeah, I, I think, and and because the studio had that, like, the original goal wording had that kind of, like, you know, once we get to this level, right. you know, we'll be working full-time and we'll have a studio. And it's, like, I think it sometimes people took that as meaning that $50,000 means that we'll be able to hire, hire everyone full-time. And it's just, like, well, it kind of meant, like, no, we're, we're at that point. <laughs> and so I think it's just one of these things that, like, slowly, like, over the years, like, you know, different people just, okay, I'm making enough. I don't need to do any side gigs right now, you know, like, or I just, I'm working so much. I don't have time for any other. There's no gigs. time. Yeah. yeah. So Don's the only one that, yeah. Who's had a consistent job. Like and, and Kyle, Ian, you, you've done some stuff. with Fire Yeah. Company. I was just like a couple of one-off things. Kyle. Yeah. He did a couple of one-off freelances. I'll do, I'll do a couple of freelances and uh i'm always working on like my own projects too but like this is my job so yeah we're all full-time it's kind of weird like i was talking about this with omar because he works at funhouse you know and and like he's getting into the boat that we've always been in at easy allies where it's like because we don't have hours and because we don't have like things we sort of are working every day. Like there aren't, there aren't times that we're not working. There are some days that are lighter where like, there are a couple of days where like, yeah, you might not have to do all that much for the company directly. But then like, you know, last night I was exporting and doing a review at midnight, you know, and it's just like, (laughs) this is how it goes. Bloodworth hasn't slept in four years. (laughs) Uh, yeah so it's it's a weird job blood has learned to get sustenance through sniffing it's actually really remarkable so all he has to do is just i'm good to go (laughs) sniff you out um it's funny ian because i think that review is going to go up like pretty much immediately after this q a i mean as soon as i go and fix that one thing yeah one thing I'll, i'll put it on chat you'll never know what that mistake was you'll never know you'll never know not my fault not my mistake. Not my fault either. <laughs> <laughs> Whose fault could it have been? All right. <laughs> mystery, mystery. Uh, next question comes in from Bio Splicer. Hello, allies. Some video games don't get the attention they deserve, so this question is dedicated to those games. What do you guys think of the following games? Spec Ops The Line, Def Jam Fight for New York, The Getaway, Singularity, and Shadow of Rome. Uh, Singularity is one of my favorite first-person weapons of all time. There's like a disintegration type thing. It's freaking amazing. Love Singularity. It is I, a gem. Dude, Huber, yes. I also love Singularity. Yes. And it was like one of the last cool original things Raven got to work on before being relegated to the call of duty dregs 
Yes. I miss dude. old original Raven software games, dude. Hell yeah. Soldier of Fortune. Was that Raven? I feel like it was. Was it? I don't know. I don't think it was. No? I, I don't know. I've heard good things about all these games, but I don't think I've played what? any of them. What was Singularity the is only one. Spec, Spec Ops The Line. line. Spec Ops The Line, oh yeah, of course. I feel I, like that that stock has risen over the years. That is no longer a hidden gem. Yeah. I think <laughs> I, I think cut that review. relatively underappreciated. For sure. But I yeah, definitely I mean, cut I something saying, for it. For sure. Um, I actually, I love Spec Ops The Line. I love it so much that before I was doing video game reviews professionally, I did an amateur review, which I still have, of Spec Ops The Line, where... I just like edited it and vo- voiced it and everything just on my own before for GT for his work for GT. I didn't know you did that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun to revisit every once in a while. Funny. Soldier of Fortune was Raven. Raven hype. Nice. Raven software. Wow. Uh, the other ones were Death Jam Fight for New York, The Getaway, which I didn't play either of those, or and I did also didn't play Shadow of Rome. The getaway I encountered at like the worst phase of my life when I was super impatient with everything and all I wanted was blood and guts and violence. Now I want blood and guts and violence with like feelings. In the feelings. <laughs> yes. So the getaway I remember I wanted GTA London, but it was like slower paced and a mm-hmm. little more deliberate. So I didn't give it a fair shake at the time. But that is definitely one that I would love to revisit. Sometimes I'm okay with just blood and guts. <laughs> True. Now I'm picturing blood and guts from Berserk, like back to back, like fighting demons, and I'm like, yeah, blood and guts. Dude, Somebody make that fan fanzine, I, please. <laughs> I just want to see Bloodworth in the Mira style, and he just enters the frame, and he just goes, "You think that's a sword?" And then that's was, it. See you next volume. Do you think he would fight <laughs> with like a bow staff or something? Like he would have blood would have a bigger sword than guts. <laughs> that's that's my headcanon. Dude, blood would have a scythe. Blood can yeah, have a scythe. Blood is a blood scythe, scythe man. Scythe. You're a scythe user. You're a blood. scythe uh, man. <laughs> or he has like a series of powders that he like throws at people and they're like <laughs> poisonous. Something weird. It would be something weird. Um, our next question comes in for Brad. And uh, forgive me, fellow panelists, but after I ask this question, I'm going to have to take a quick research break. Uh, Brad says, I spent my COVID pittance check from the government upgrading my PC with a 12 core 12 core Zizen CPU and a Radeon uh, 5700 video card. Have the Allies bought anything fun to get the economy stimulated? Uh... uh you go. I, I didn't do it for the economy. I did it for me. But I bought. I'm upgrading my PC as well. I've got an AMD Ryzen X3950 showing up today, uh, and I had to get a new motherboard, new RAM, and a liquid cooler for that. I've also purchased the new Arturia Keystep Pro and a couple of synth modules. Uh, expert sleepers are coming out with a disting. Uh, uh, what is it called? Like Super EX Alpha or something, which is a crazy version of the Disting Mark IV. Doesn't mean anything to any of you, but it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. So, it, I mean, I have to keep my PC updated every few years just for doing my job. So, right. like cutting cutting well, stuff last night was real annoying. One, when we when we ordered the parts and you built that one, and you're like just impressed by how much faster you could export things oh yeah this one i i i looked through puget systems i did the benchmark i did all the research and stuff uh we omar and i are both upgrading our computers at the same time uh he got a the the cpu one down from mine because it was just way cheaper and the results are almost the same but like uh yeah, we, we like got the right kind of speed of RAM to play nicely with the motherboard and stuff without having to like change any settings and stuff. Um, this is my first AMD processor build, I think, yes. But um, you're, is it still NVIDIA graphics card? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, the the I have a 2080 Super, uh, which is better than the AMD stuff. But the the Ryzen 9 series is actually better than Intel and way cheaper. So got it. Yeah, currently. Yeah, might need to talk to you in a few months when I have to upgrade for Cyberpunk. <laughs> this uh, this upgrade cost two thousand one hundred dollars, <laughs> and it was not including a graphics card. Wow. So good thing I have been saving money for a while because <laughs> I couldn't. My old my old processor is really bad. It's really slow. I too am saving, but I had to eventually splurge on headphones because these legit make my ears bleed. It's all like worn down and shit. Yeah. It's bad. So I just ordered headphones and I'm very excited about it. Nice. Yeah, What'd I, you I get? Got, I got replacements. They're basically um, the same. What did I get? I got the, what did I get? Blood Blood and Brad were helping me. Yeah, you, you got the HyperX. Uh, yeah. Slightly different model than what I have, but. Yeah. I had HyperX for years just from like a PR contact who I, I was went to a preview event and he was also doing HyperX when they started doing headphones and like, here you go. And like, okay. And I really liked them. And so I bought these, um, what, six, seven years later. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, as everybody in chat knows, I, I try not to spend money if I can avoid it. <laughs> I get it. Our next question comes in from Angelo. Hey, allies. Quick one for the people that played Final Fantasy VII Remake. What's your favorite jukebox song? Oh, good question. Why did they make the step song so damn catchy? Midgar Blues. That's a good pick. I don't remember the name of it, but the one, the like Don Corneo one that's similar to the Don lobby the music. What? I think it's called Don of the Slums. Something like that. That it has like a real like tango kind of vibe. It's cool. Um, yeah. What is the the dubstep chocobo? Oh yeah. Just the chocobo warks in there remixed in. Uh-huh. Also, Prelude. <laughs> Prelude is in like my top three yeah, the songs of all time in any way, shape, or form. So like any variation on Prelude is sick. Yeah, Wu-Tai well, yeah, you go back too. to that that Final Fantasy question. Yeah, Final Fantasy IV, just like having that, listening to that on the title screen forever. We did it. We did it. Um, I think it's the Sector Six slums. That song that has like, it's like electric. They remix it and it's like electric and it's got some hip hop in it. I love that song so much. I don't remember what it's called, but hot take. They're all pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Best collectible of uh, 2020 so far, I feel like. Besides everything in Animal Crossing, yeah. yeah and Doom has <laughs> some good ones. That's actually a pretty good, pretty good list. Hmm. All right, we did it. Good job, us. Yeah. Wait, was that the last question or just we did that question? Well, uh, we, that's our last question forever. We're never taking another question. Oh, wow. That's it. Well, no, no more. sorry, that tier. <laughs> yep, if, yep. <laughs> if you ask a question, we'll have to ban you. No, no, no. I meant for Final Fantasy VII music, but we do have another also, question. Go ahead. I can't stop, I can't stop listening to the uh, pull-up remix. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Huber. Yeah. That, that, uh, that animation, all the yeah. workout animations, are emotes in 14. Um, really? Yeah, and uh, I, are I, they I, stutter I, step I, too? I, yeah, so I I, inter- I brought it up for a second on stream, and then killed the uh, fourteen music, and then played the the workout <laughs> music and stuff, and had a few nice. people are like, "That's it, I'm I'm subscribing to this game now." That's like, yeah. so <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> Start doing your uh, mini games. That's excellent. All right, next question comes in from Kelvin. Hey there, allies. I've been a gamer since my childhood, but I'm only following video games closely since the PS4. I'm hyped for PS5, and I'm going to get it day one. However, yesterday, I researched about the games that were released for PS4 one year after it was released to get a feel for how game releases of PS5 will be like, and was quite shocked to see that there's not much to go on even a year after the PS4's release. Notable games are Watch Dogs, Shadow of Mordor, Killzone, Assassin's Creed, and Infamous, to name a few. I wasn't sure that I would be playing all of them today. So my question is, do you think 
you will get your next gen console on day one, especially if you are not in the game industry. Will backwards compatibility play a big role in this since current gen consoles were not backwards compatible? We, I mean, we all kind of just have to get, get it, but yeah. if it is, especially if it's backwards compatible, it'd be great because my PS4 is like dying. So, yeah, I'm going to get it as soon as I can, but. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm in that same boat where, like, I'm holding off, like, not getting a pro because next yeah. gen will be here and hopefully we'll do all that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, I get working it all out. Yeah. I'm trading in my PS4 Pro and getting a PS5. I get the lack of uh, potential exclusives for each, you know, PS5 and uh, Series X. But I think even just the, the next gen versions of a lot of the games that are coming out also is like, worth it to me you know just oh, yeah. playing the good versions of like i don't know say assassin's creed or watchdogs or something so let me put it to you this way i got a stadia on day one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let me put it to you this way Regret. did you buy an ouya ben i didn't uh <sighs> i didn't have the money at the time to buy an ouya but ah, i probably okay. would have you would have probably would have mm-hmm. yeah I, I just like, uh, even when it's bad, it's good for me, right? Like, I just have such an intense and general interest in video games yeah. that, like, I just want that shit around, even yeah. if it's the worst piece of garbage, man. I just want that new <laughs> system, man. I just want it, Ben. I want to feel the vibes yeah. of the next-gen uh, yeah, hardware. Ben said he ordered that uh, Turbo Graphics too. Yeah, I did. Nice. May have no idea when I'm getting it. but No idea. It's on order. I have this week. We haven't actually gotten a chance to stream it because I want to stream it with Don in the studio. Um, but I have this little uh, Neo Geo Mini that I want to show Don that you can play in a bunch of different ways. And I, it's, it's actually really cool and of decent quality, so I'd like to show it to him. Did Maybe you end up getting that Capcom arcade thing that Don has? No, I didn't look into it, but you've reminded me. Don't do it. Dude, Alien vs. Predator hype. I mean, it's good. The good version of Puzzle Fighter. Yeah. $300 or something. Yeah. Just um, put that on the Switch, man. Yeah. Yeah. Next question comes in from Ebo's show. Every generation that comes, we have games that skip a generation for some reason. For example, we had a Bioshock Splinter Cell game the year next-gen consoles released, but the series disappeared. Will these do the same thing? Mass Effect, Star Wars, Battlefront, Ghost Recon, Tomb Raider, Uncharted, Little Big Planet, Crackdown, Mino Cooney, Dark Souls, Marvel vs. Capcom. Can we go one at a time? Yeah. Rapid fire? Yeah, sorry. So are they going to skip next gen? Is that the question? Skip, skip a gen. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Mass Effect. I don't Skipping, think it's dude. Dead forever. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. gone. For an entire generation? It is considering, gone. It unless is they do a remaster. Considering how long that they're working on Dragon Age and how they're trying to sort of yeah. like revive that company in a way and still trying to salvage Anthem. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Mass Effect like at the earliest that's happening the end of the generation. Unless we count a remaster. I could see somebody else doing a remaster. I wouldn't count it though. Yeah. In terms of like, yeah, uh, you know, whether or not it skipped a generation. Right. So Dead Space skipped a generation. I don't think Mass. I think. I don't think Mass Effect will be gone forever. I think it will no. come back. Yeah. Even if it's like late next gen. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, right that there. momentum. It'll be there. It'll yeah. be there. Yep. Ghost Recon. Tie it in with uh, Mandalorian somehow. Oh my god. Baby Yoda. Oh. Yep. Yeah. He plays Baby Yoda. Ghost Recon? I think because Recon's gone for a while. The last one was... A... Yeah, but this this is saying like an entire generation. I don't think Ghost yeah, Recon I, I will be think, gone I don't think Ghost generation. Recon's gone longer than three years. Yeah, yeah. it'll come yeah. back. Like, at three years, do we still have a lot of generation left? We got four yeah. whole years left. Yeah. I don't know, just with the last one and the way Ubisoft is going now and like pulling the not pulling the plug, but like putting a putting a halt on everything. I think but 
They've just like, said that they want they want to give things time to be the quality that people expect. For sure, but if like Splinter Cell and Prince of Persia easily skip last like this generation, like I could easily see Ghost but, Recon doing. But Splinter thing. Cell and Prince of Persia, I feel like don't lend themselves to the type of thing that Ubisoft has shown that they're attracted to, right? In mm-hmm. the same way, where I yeah. think with Ghost Recon, it's easier to get a game that you're constantly updating, yeah. you're stuffing with. Sure. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, like For Honor Extra content. has been more successful than Prince of Persia. Like, it just has. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, Prince of Persia kind of ran its course. Like, Assassin's Creed kind of took it over. Whereas, like, tactical military shooters are just destined to live forever. I can see that. Till the sun burns out, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah. It'll yeah, be I around. Wonder when, uh, I wonder what the next one looks like. I wonder. That'll, yeah, that'll be back. I don't think it skips. No. I don't think I, it skips. I wonder what that future looks like. I'm, yeah, I wonder what Square Enix strategy looks like after Avengers Bombs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sad but true. I mean, sad I would, but true. The game gonna, is so yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do with all that. I feel like they're gonna. I wonder what they're gonna do about Idos. Honestly, it's gonna be in this weird spot where like their Japanese side is making all the money now. This gen and the uh, Idos side is not bringing in the money anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Tomb Tomb Raider is an interesting one. I think it'll be a while. I think like what you were saying with Ghost Recon. It'll be a while, but I'm not. I'm not convinced that it'll skip the whole regeneration. Uncharted, though, is a little interesting. I could totally see Uncharted going away and then moving on to other things, as as they tend to do, generation yeah. after generation. Yeah. But will Sony find a way to get a studio to build more Uncharted games just for the name? They could put out yeah. like a smaller one, like a yeah, that's the way to do it. Lost Legacy size. One. Probably. Golden Abyss. Yeah. Little Big yeah. Planet. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm just really curious what Naughty Dog might end up doing after Same. Last of Us. Yeah. New because IP. they didn't seem like they want to continue doing Uncharted. Like they, I think they like, we've told the story, we're going to move on. And I think even Last of Us 2 was like sort of on the fence as to whether they were going to do that or not. So I wonder what else is like on those back burners that they want to get to. Definitely. Cra- Crash Bandicoot reboot. Little Big so Planet. Uh, Little uh, Big Planet's no. done. That's yeah, done. I don't, I don't think we're, I agree. I don't think we're going to see any more of it. Man, this is depressing me. So many of my favorite franchises skipped this gen. Just you can just like... you can just make Little Big Planet in dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Crackdown. Dead Oof. franchise. It It'll feels dead. pretty dead. Crackdown <laughs> three might make feels... itself a sequel, but <laughs> it won't dead. release it. Yeah, dead franchise. Nino Cooney. Don't I after think a poorly well. two sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think, think that's think. done. I think so. Yeah, I mean they did do the one remaster and stuff, but I think that was just that was it. The movie. The, the movie came out and didn't do very well either, so I think it's... There's a movie? It came out on Netflix, I think, finally. Uh, it came out in Japan first, but it came out on Netflix. It's not that good. It's like, oh. okay. Yeah, I, I think without the direct Studio Ghibli involvement, it kind of lost its... Uh, mm-hmm. What made it special. Like, its appeal to a lot of people. Dark Souls. Yeah, it's skipping. There will not be a there will not be a game called Dark Souls something all this gen. Dude, I, I don't think I think it's might gonna be, done. be Demon Souls yeah. too. They honestly I might mean, be done. Might be Demon Souls, but like I think they're done with Dark Souls. Like the final Dark Souls three DLC was like pretty Right. Pretty pretty much it. Yeah, I this mean one's, Elden Ring. This one's hard because I agree with everything you guys are saying and right they're still continuing in that vague style right so they're kind of retaining their audience that way but at the same time i just feel like the soul's name has so much power 
that even if they were to take a lot of time and do other projects, I don't think it's unreasonable that they would ever return to it. I don't know. Right. I'm a little torn yeah. on this one. I also think that, like, unless it's somehow misfires, so like the amount of, you know, investment they're doing with the Elden Ring in terms of lore and that kind of thing is probably probably going to be something that could carry through a couple of games. Yeah. Yeah. And it'd be so much more awesome, dude, if Dark Souls just disappeared for an entire generation quietly slumbering away and then like next gen it comes back we get, i mean you we know there's VR gonna be sequel there's gonna be a remaster of like all of them yeah. for ps5 like yeah. they put that thing on everything yeah i would be so into a demon souls remaster oh yeah. Yeah. really yeah. gorgeous demon yes. souls remaster. day day zero yes. man i'd be there yeah uh last one marvel versus capcom Ooh. Ooh, wow. I, yeah. I mean, I want to believe yes. I feel like, I mean, I feel like a versus game is going to happen this coming gen, but I really think if there's any possibility to bring back more of us Capcom, it will happen this gen. Don't I, they I like hate each other or something? Isn't there like some kind of background, whatever? Uh, some, I mean, Infinite was troubled, like the development and stuff, but I mean, there's a there's a i mean there's a there's a history there i mean marvel vs capcom 3 sold a lot and it was very well received and also nvc2 is considered like one of the best fighting games you know one of the most popular fighting games ever made i i think there's just in marvel's like that resurgence i think infinite was just like a misstep uh, i i think they just they take they make it proper and MV, mvc4 and now with all the stuff that's happened, they can have X Men. They can have all the all the characters can be sure. in and stuff. I think it's right for like, hey, let's do a do over and let's get it right this time. I, I think it's it has to try and come back this gen. What's funny with MVC four is, regardless of how you feel about the actual game, just the response and release of Infinite was such a trash fire that like. I feel like the bar is pretty low. Like, as long as it's pretty good, I feel like it would be very well received. You know, as long as it looked good, that would go so far. Um, I, I don't even think they would need to reinvent the wheel with the new MVC to, to have it uh, Yeah, Capcom loved. is having this resurgence right now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they, they have money. They have some clout. You know, they've got buzz, so once things return a little bit to normal and they can resume like you know, if they like can if they're ready to work on it or if they haven't you know they can negotiate i i think it's, it's the, they're set up for the best and what you said ben they're basically in the best position to deliver an mvc4 that's just going to be has to be a success but right. more of a success than infinite all right uh our next question is from danky kang <laughs> thank you danky kang <laughs> for letting me say that. Bonjour, allies. I have a game for y'all that's like Or Wars mixed with Kill Your Babies. Here are the groups of theoretical game media. You may pit the winners from each matchup against one another however you please until only one remains. Okay, so we have two... All right, the way that this works is we have two divisions and we have to pick one of them and then we can pick... I'll, I'll probably have to write this down because it's getting a little complicated. Uh, Your game have a name. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. So, all right. To or babies. Or your this, babies. Yeah. <laughs> or your babies. Uh, all right. So the first match here, we have to pick one of these two things, okay? A new Sui Coden game or a new Final Fantasy Tactics game. Sui so uh, uh. I know. This one's really tough. I think I would go Sukoden. I think it goes yeah Sukoden because Final Fantasy needs no help, but Final yeah. Fantasy Tactics does. Well, but like there's later, still yeah. hope. There's still later, hope for Tactics. I'm later sure. Sukoden games. Sure. Later Sukoden games weren't as good. Like four, five, and Tactics. Like nobody. Seems is to like the company. But even yeah, considering say, that history, like, and it makes yeah. me more excited to see what they would do. Yeah. I mean, I love Sukoden. One and two are like some of my favorite games ever. So, but so is Tactics. But just put Tactics on Switch, and we're winners. Yeah. 
Sukun 3 was good, yeah. So, so Sukoden. I wrote down Sukoden. Are we yeah. good with that? Yes. A new Quake or a new Bioshock? Oh. Well, there's yeah, currently like a, weird... a Quake that yeah. no one's playing. Right. So I think that's kind of the thing that makes this weird to me is, hell yeah, I would be down with a new awesome Quake, but Quake Champions doesn't seem like that long ago. Right. And I'd just be yeah, interested yeah, yeah. to see what a, what new form a new Bioshock game would take. So I think I would pick Bioshock here. Yeah. You just said yeah, that it's Bioshock. in development or something, right? Or concept? What, Bioshock? Yeah. Yeah, it's been rumored for a while. Bioshock. So says Schreier. Those guys are all nuts, though. So says... Where would Jason go again? Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Bloomberg, yeah, Bloomberg Games, yeah. When Kyle starts working at Bloomberg, he can tell us. <laughs> I wrote down Bioshock. Are we good with that? Sure. 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 Yep. Though Quake is sweet. Yes. Yes. Should be said, Quake is sweet. A John Wick game made by Rockstar or a Game of Thrones game made by From Software? Mm. Game of Thrones can eat shit and die. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel right now. No, dude. no Game of I Thrones. I mean, George Martin die. is already involved in Elden Ring, so that's yeah. already Yeah, but that's not true. the HBO is not involved with this. Report. John Wick. John, John Wick. Is... John Wick. All right. Yeah. John Wick. Uh, officially, eat shit and die. Yeah. An anime series about professional chocobo racing or an anime series about a struggling blitzball team? Professional oh, cho oh, chocobo, chocobo racing. racing. Chocobo racing, yeah. Though both of those would be oh. funny, especially if the goers were involved. <laughs> I'm going to go with the blitzball because I like sports. Oh, Racing's dang, a sport. Right? Yeah. True. Yeah, true. The I could just view, view Don cool. in anime style. Yeah. Chocobo Which, racing. Okay. Uh, I guess the, sports with balls, I should say. I like sports with balls. <laughs> the the, the biggest there. problem, the make or break thing on that chocobo thing, is is how often they rely on que. Right. You just hear que like every other line in the background. I gotta get more Geshel greens. <laughs> que. Get some more uh, greens and let them go. We don't have any more. That's the opening uh, right there. That's yeah. the that's the op. <laughs> you kid, um, get more Geshel greens. Uh-huh. We're out. An MGS1 remake or a Kingsfield remake? Do Kingsfield remake easily. Kingsfield. Really? Yeah, I got an MGS1 remake. Yeah. Let's do Kingsfield. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm, I feel like remakes are so good now though. Shit. But yeah, Kingsfield, but, but shit. I feel like Dark Souls uh, is a Kingsfield remake. Like, I feel yeah. like I feel like there's already so much appreciation for Metal Gear Solid though. I, in my opinion, Metal Gear yeah. Solid One still holds up. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's already, I still yeah. want that like that dream that Fox Engine MGS because of the MGS Four chapter. It's like, man, yeah, I want dude. this remake. Where is uh, it? <laughs> also, Konami is a shell of a company. Konami is a shell of a Yeah, company. but they don't have to make it. They can a hand desiccated it off to, husk. They can sell it. Give it to Capcom. It's to, it to Kojima Productions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To well, yeah, them. So we seem torn on this one. Kojima, think of Kojima Productions doing a remake, remake <laughs> of MGS1. That shit would be bonkers. And it's just part, and it's just part one. It, it would go part. so <laughs> weird. It would, it, would, it would be part one of ten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it ends at like Vulcan Rage or something. <laughs> <laughs> 30 hour game and you know, get Vulcan Rage. <laughs> Dude, no, it ends it ends at Revolver Ocelot. Oh and it's God. a 40 hour game. <laughs> they would it would be so weird. Like half the game trying to find the explosives, the materials were. You there's, just there's just like the random Shadow babies Moses. in it. That's it. <sighs> I feel like Kojima would just spend 30 minutes like panning around Snake's character model. Because <laughs> you'd probably well the like, elevator. You could do that on the elevator. You would going start up. in the like just the, like smoking a cigarette. Just, yeah. like, 30 straight minutes. You would start in the like the medical lab place or whatever where the, the watch the tapes at the beginning of the game. 
You yeah. start there with like Naomi and stuff. Like, dude, yeah. They, they, Close ups on his like biceps being injected with serums and fox dye. Like, one whole chapter would be on the submarine going to her. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Perfect solution. <sighs> Kingsfield is an optional VR mission within the <laughs> MGS remake. We've yeah. done it. We yeah. still do. Actually, no, wait. Mandatory. <laughs> Next one. A new KOTAR game or Shadow of the Colossus 2? I I strongly feel a uh, new KOTAR game here. Yeah. I don't know why I don't, you don't want a sequel to Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. I, I feel like Shadow because... of the Colossus is such a perfect singular game. Yeah. Uh, about about that. Yeah, <laughs> we kind of already. Have yeah, one. play the game and then figure it out for yourself. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the other one. Kotor. Kotor. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. That one was easy. Uh, faithful anime of RE One or Dead Space Four. Dead Space. Dead Space Four. four. How do I'd you take that? How I'd do you take not... One anime. <laughs> Over Dead Space Four. Absolutely, Dead space, please. Oh man, I feel strongly about Dead Space. I feel so strongly about Dead Space because think like, of Chris Redfield going, "We need more Gashel Greens." <laughs> <laughs> you're, wait, wait, you're just putting three... him in the Chocobo racing game. <laughs> <laughs> no, he would say that in RE One. We got the three anime movies, and they were like, whatever. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah, Dead Space Four, obviously. All right, um, we're just a damn remaster. Hook a, us up. A battle royale Soul Calibur game. Or an action RPG Pokemon game. Action <laughs> RPG Pokemon. That Soul Calibur sounds uh, tight. I am kind of curious about the Battle Royale Soul Calibur. Like, ring outs. You gotta get ring outs. And it yeah. just keeps shrinking. Huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Many, it's a ring, yeah. How many players? A hundred. Kind of 12, have an action RPG Pokemon already, though. <laughs> yeah, they can't make That's good true. games. So we gotta just do this, the Soul Calibur one. Soul Calibur. Do we get all the guest characters too? So many characters. You can make your own, obviously, but right. so many. Dude, they could have some really cool events. Yeah. They should Soul make Calibur this. cross Fortnite. <laughs> A melee fighting game mechanics uh, battle royale? That'd be gnarly. That would be cool. All right, now we got to pit them against each other. Uh, we got to move oh a little faster than yeah. we have all right. been. No uh, discussion, just, just answers. Yep, lightning round. All right. Suicoden or MGS1? Suicoden. Suicoden. Okay. Bioshock or KOTOR? KOTOR. Bioshock. Bioshock. All right. John Wick or Dead Space 4? Dead John Space, Wick made Space 4. Yeah. Okay. Dead Space, yeah. Uh, professional Chocobo Racing Anime or Soul Calibur Battle Royale? Chocobo, Chocobo Anime. Chocobo Anime. Anime. <laughs> anime. <laughs> All right. Why, why is there not already a Chocobo anime? How does that not exist? Sui Coden or Chocobo anime? Sui Coden. Coden, yeah. <laughs> Bioshock or Dead Space 4? New Bioshock or Dead Space 4? Dead Space 4. Dead Space, Dead Space, Space 4. All right. Dead Space 4 or a new Sui Coden? Sui Coden. Sui Coden. Yeah. Wow. I'll say Dead Space, but you, you can all say Sue Coden's good. Sue Coden, that's fine. All right, ejecting Huber from the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Weebs win. Win. <laughs> I did not expect that to win that. Dude, Sue Coden, clean it up. Hype, dude. Oh, yeah. This is what happens when you kick Brandon Jones out. It's yeah. a taste. <laughs> oh, yeah, for anyone curious, we fired Brandon Jones. Yeah. 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 He's working hard. No, I'm, ju <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm chat. All right, next There's question. A hostile takeover. <laughs> yeah. Next question comes in from Crazy Man Three Thousand. What are some of the worst video game reviews or reactions to reviews you've read or seen? Jim Sterling's review for Breath of the Wild, being met with overwhelming vitriol from Zelda Nintendo fans, oh. was insanity of the highest order. Yeah, it was pretty nuts. Also, a British journalist called Matthew Castle received backlash for giving Smash Brothers Brawl on Wii a ninety-three percent. <laughs> <laughs> 
on the reviews front, I know IGN are an easy go-to for terrible reviews because their style just isn't for me whatsoever, but some of them are notably awful, like Alien Isolation, Doom, and not forgetting the legendary Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire reviews. Also, the British video game website GamesRadar Plus is substandard and woefully generic in terms of content and critique. Don't think I've seen them give a game lower than two and a half stars. This immediately makes me think of the Jeff Gerstmann, like, 8.8 nonsense. He gave oh, yeah, Twilight yeah, yeah. yeah. Princess an 8.8, yeah, yeah. and, like, people freaked out for years. It was nuts. Was yeah, like, I don't know. It feels like bad vibes to, like, go picking yeah. on reviews themselves. The reactions are a little Yeah, bit, yeah. I don't, I don't really want to pick on reviews, but reactions I mean, like, reviews, yeah. any, any vitriolic reaction to any video game thing at all, I find absurd. Like right. it's just video games. Like, it's not worth being upset about. But yeah. But yeah, when you yeah when you're talking about like something got a nine point three or an eight point eight and people are upset. And <laughs> That's like, like yeah, the it's most, an like, amazing <laughs> score. I don't understand. Yeah. Go yeah. away, please. <laughs> that is perfection. It's just like well, like we, even we will get those. Like, well, what? Why did the point five get taken off? And like, why do you think it was there to begin with? Uh, yeah. Eurogamer gave Uncharted three an eight, and people got really testy about that mm. as well. It's just such an impossible thing because like scores mean something different to everyone, and every review is like taken out of context. I feel like as time goes goes by, you know, it's just such an impossible thing. I don't know. Yeah. Hell, reviews, I'm still, reviews freak me the hell out. Mega I'm still pissed we gave really Last good. Guardian a perfect score. So. <laughs> the, the Shout Avengers out. Because <laughs> like an 8 to me is an incredible video game, but then sometimes you'll read through comments on any review across the internet and it's like, well, an 8.0, like, oh, bad game or something. And it's like, what? Or like something gets a 7 and it's just like a complete failure. I think I or honestly like, think, or contextualized like, too when something big gets a nine, but then that can be perceived as bad. It's just all it's so right. Weird. It's it's hard because if somebody's just like, "Hey, I liked this thing and you didn't like it," or vice versa, there's not really much of a conversation to be had there. Like I don't know how to how to bridge that gap. But if somebody's like, hey, I don't think you constructed your argument very well, and here's why, you know, this point didn't make sense, or you didn't support it properly, or whatever, that is way more interesting um, than just, you know, the score's too high or too low, because yeah. I, I don't, that, that's not always the most helpful. Yeah. Context. The written um, Yeah, I, I, I haven't done it in a while, but... Um... Going back to like reviews, I don't have like a specific example, but it is funny if you are on like one end of a scale, like if you are at like an eight or a nine, and then you go to Metacritic and you look at the people that are on like somebody gave it a four or or, or three or something, or you know, and and then you read those opposite ends of the of the scale and you're just like, what? Like it, it doesn't even like it, sometimes it doesn't even compute that you're talking about the same game with yeah. some of the things people say. Like this doesn't sound true to me at all. I've, didn't I've been somebody, doesn't Ian, like Ian, actually, you might know this. Didn't somebody huh? purposefully give Toy Story three a bad score so they could be the only bad review of it, so that everyone would like go and read it or something? Was there <laughs> some like, Toy Story three controversy? I didn't hear about that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we have a equivalent of a Armand White in video games, person who gives like. The complete opposite score of like mainstream mm. for every single thing that comes out. Uh, e Online does that. Uh, there was a long time where I would just do the opposite of whatever E Online said about movies. Uh, I've been talking to the. Helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually the. It, for a long time, it was the clearest metric that I had. I was like, if E Online hates it, it means it's smart and good, and I will go see it. Uh, I've been, for me, like my own personal, because I think like I suffer from the thing Huber is talking about too, where it's like I equate high school like ABC to sevens and eights and nines, you know, which I think a lot of people do. And that's why they think a seven is bad. But like 
for me, I've been trying to think of a system for my own way of scoring things. And I honestly think it just comes down to like, not, not good or slash not for me, fine and actually good. And I think actually good, there would only be like 30 games ever, you know? It's and funny. almost everything is fine. It's funny, Ian, because that, that comes into play a lot, I feel like, when we talk about games. Because when you're really into a game, and we're like, yeah, we're going to give it a 9, you're like, what the fuck? Why aren't you giving it a 10? <laughs> like that, that comes yeah. into play. That definitely comes into play sometimes. Yeah. Which is funny. Yeah. There are only, in my world, there are 1s, there are 5s, and there are 10s. Yeah. <laughs> Um, next question comes in from Caesar. Uh, hello allies. I don't know why yesterday the movie name El Octavo Pasajero came to my mind, which translates to the eight passenger. You may never guess that's what the movie they called. That's what they called alien here in Mexico, but a combination of the bad translation and the fact that the council of the nine just lost a member. Interesting. Made me wonder who would each of you be in this movie in case your memory needs to shake, be shaken up. (coughs) Excuse me. Here are the seven Nostromo crew members plus the alien. Dallas, Ripley, Lambert, Brett, Kane, Ash, Parker, the alien. Well, Jones would be Dallas. I want to be the cat. Ian, dude, you're Ash. Sorry, man. Fuck you. Or not Ash. Not Ash. Um, Ian Holm, dude. Droid. That's Ash. It's Ash. Yeah, you're Ash. Yeah. You think I'm Ash? <laughs> yeah. Clearly, blood with this Ash. You're co. You're co. Blood with this. <laughs> what? Who gets to be mother? Oh, Ian's would, mother. Okay. I would be mother. Is, yeah. And then blood I'd be is mother. Ash. What's Ash? Yeah. I would be mother. I'd be like, yeah, secretly working for corporate evil. Uh. The, the problem with this game is most of the crew dies and then the ones who don't die right away are evil or the best person who ever lived. Right, right. There's and such a think, disparity. Yeah, right. and I don't think any of us are any of those things. Jones is definitely Dallas. <laughs> is yeah, Brett- Sophie can be Ripley. Yeah, there you go. Sophie is yep. Ripley. <laughs> I want to be Brett. Huber, you're the alien. Actually, Damiani's Brett, dude, looking for the cat the whole damn time. You're the, the alien, Parker. Huber. You're the you're the alien. Oh, oh sweet. We did aliens. <laughs> cool. I'll be the alien then. I'm yeah. Cool. I win. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did you win? win? But did you win, Huber? Can no, I get blown that? out of the goddamn airlock. Yeah. <laughs> Can it be denied that the Xenomorph is one of the greatest sci-fi designs ever? I admire its purity. I admire its purity. I admire its purity. That's one of the funny things with the yeah, Turbo Graphics 16 is seeing how many how many references <laughs> there were to Alien. Yeah. Alien has to be one of the most ripped off things. Yeah. Ever. Aliens would be easier to yeah. apply to. Yeah, like, Huber say, would be... Yeah. Huber is probably Hudson. Hudson. Hudson, yeah. Hudson. <laughs> Can I please be Hudson? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, I guess Jones would be Hicks. Yeah, Jones is Hicks. Uh, That's pretty good. Is, is, is Bloodworth Blood Bishop? Uh, Blood is either Bishop or uh, Paul Reiser. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gonna make him the corporate. Burke. Burke. Burke, yeah. I'll be Bishop. Ben can be Bishop. Uh, Damiani, I feel like you're that pilot lady. Uh, what was there? No, she Gorman? just dies right away. Who's Gorman? Yeah. Nobody's, Lieutenant Gorman. Nobody's fucking Gorman. I mean, Bossman's <laughs> Gorman. Bossman like, was Gorman, is, is dude. Like Brad would be Apone. <laughs> Brad would be Apone, yeah. <laughs> Let's rock, Vasquez. Milo uh, is Newt. Milo is Newt for sure. Who's Vasquez? Amanda. I feel like she's not rude enough. <laughs> like, true. Yeah, I don't know. Boss is for but sure. Vasquez is one of a kind. Yeah. Always my favorite growing up. I want to be the transaxle. Blow the trains. 
Whoa. Somebody girl, needs to ease down. The girl who Newt down. only ever acted in Aliens and nothing else. Yeah. I mean, what else do you need, really? Yeah. All right. Um, next question comes in from... Oh, wait. That, hang on. That's a good... Who's chat? <laughs> in Aliens. The Queen. The Queen. The Queen. The Queen. Yeah. <laughs> the queen. Absolutely. You for us all, all chat. Yeah. <laughs> They're the countdown. Oh yeah, Jess, Jessica Linverdi is Vasquez for sure. Chat's the countdown at the end. <laughs> yeah. Chat is the nukes sitting ready to nuke it from orbit. Chat the, being the, the alien the queen is the best elevator. visualization. <laughs> All right. Uh, our next question comes in from Chiruju Engi. You are a main character of the next Uncharted game. What treasure are you searching for? What places do you go? And who of the allies is your partner? Dignity. Um, searching for dignity. We're going to Japan. <laughs> My mind immediately went to Japan as well. We're searching for the PS5. <laughs> and... Hmm. Who is our partner? Yuffie. Dr. Anthony Fauci is with us. <laughs> Charted. Yeah, it's set in 2022 after all of humanity is decimated. I feel like not just Uncharted, but like Assassin's Creed and Tomb Raider, when you count all of those series, they've hit so many of these beats. Yeah. I'm just trying to think what hasn't been done. And I'm not a history buff, so. Right. <laughs> Yeah, like a lot like, of them, like, treasure, I'm like, mm, have they found yeah. the Rosetta Stone? Well, we have that. Right. Like a lot of the main, main, main beats have been. Have they? Done. They've done El Dorado. Mm -hmm. El Dorado, Tree of Life, like the Mayans. Atlantis. Atlantis mm -hmm. was recent with Assassin's Creed. It's like all this stuff has been hit. Have they found Mjolnir? They have not really touched Vikings, but the next Assassin's Creed is where the next Vikings. Assassin's Creed is doing <laughs> Vikings. <sighs> Uncharted hasn't done Egypt, but uh, Assassins did, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have to think about that. Like long Assassins and hard. did pirate stuff. Yeah, long Man. and hard. They have kind of covered most of the bases. <laughs> yeah, like so the. Uh, Revolutionary War and all that, like the Wild West has been done. Yo, dude, if they did an Uncharted style game that was like dude, the, Wild West. the the thing or X Files, where they go to Antarctica Ooh. and find a frozen like oh, alien or mammoth or something, that would be sure. cool. Okay, I'm in. I'm in for either the Wild West Uncharted or Aliens Uncharted. Both, baby. Yeah. Cowboys versus aliens. That just gives oh, me never mind. Kingdom of the <laughs> Crystal Skull vibes. Cowboys versus aliens, man. Yeah, it is Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> Naughty Dog yeah. comes back. They were like, you know, we're just such big fans of Cowboys versus aliens. <laughs> it's definitely our, our inspiration. You could take Nicolas Cage along with you on a treasure hunt. <laughs> oh, you know what would be nuts? Is an Uncharted game where they are looking for some kind of secret uh, like my like what happened to the mines or whatever uh, they discover that like simulation theory is a thing and then they discover that their entire reality is a simulation but and then, then they meet Shuhei yeah they meet Shuhei Yoshida and and Neil Druckmann and then the character is like and then and then the, the game ends Druckmann deletes the the game from his hard drive and they cease to exist. Yeah. <laughs> Next question comes in from James. What is the worst game you have ever completed 100%? Like credits or like a platinum 100%. Trophy? Did it all. Uh, I don't, dude, I barely even 100% games that I'm obsessed yeah. with. Yeah, this I is a hard question. Right. So you're basically I hit to the say credits like, and I like move good on. game, which was the least favorite <laughs> Wait. game. Uh, we all platinumed Walking Dead season one, episode one, or whatever, because you just auto platinum it. But that Walking Dead season one is sick. 
I know that we're talking about all good. If the question is what's the worst game you play, yeah, they're right. all going to be good. True. So I'm th I'm thinking the worst of the bunch is probably that one. Majin. Mm -hmm. I know I still like that game a lot. I thought it was pretty good, but Majin I platinum, but like that's like a eight range game. Majin Boo. <laughs> no. Yeah, the Majin Boo simulator, dude. Yeah, Majin. Yeah. The Majin Boo immersive sim. Besides which, that year, one, which year though, two thousand three or two thousand five? Because personally, I like two thousand three a little bit more. Because I've only other pla otherwise platinumed like Bloodborne and The Witness. You know, I did. I got all the right. achievements in Assassin's Creed two, which is very good. But hmm. I don't. I don't. I'm assuming this isn't the actual spirit of the question. It's yeah. maybe like, what's the worst game you beat? Yeah, never dead. Oh man, the worst game. Probably a game I reviewed. Took like, forever. Yeah, I'm, try, yeah, I'm trying to look through my my right, reviews so cool. list right now. Heavy Rain. <laughs> Never did a Duke Nukem Four, Forever. Four. Iron Man. GI Joe: Rise of Cobra. Spray. All bad. I don't even remember this. I did a review for Carnival Games DS. Hey Ian, you're a Tomata. Hey, Ian. I give that. Last, Duke Nukem Last Forever. Guardian. I never Last finished Guardian. that pile of crap. I never finished that pile of steaming trash. <laughs> hey, Ian. Hey. Do you think The Last Guardian is masterful? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is a poor, poor video game. Carn Carnival Games DS got a 5.6. Um... Deadhead Fred. Oh, that was just a preview. <laughs> Dewey's Adventure is a game that I actually didn't finish and did the review because I was like the last boss and the motion controls. I'm just like, all right, I'm done. I can't keep playing this boss for hours and hours. Superman 64 is another one for me. Do you finish Superman 64? Dude, I finish a lot of games, and <laughs> some of them are really bad. Silent Less Hill bad games. Than, pretty bad. There's, a, like, there's a lot of good games nowadays. <laughs> there are a lot of fine games. <laughs> Our next question comes in from Dear Dream Studios. Hey, allies, quick question for you. With major developers slash publishers leaving the horror genre behind, indie development has been picking up the slack, in your opinion, what makes a memorable horror title? Love and respect the Cooking Companions. Uh, atmosphere is number one for me with mm -hmm. horror. Need a good atmosphere. Um, Psychological motivation. Mm -hmm. Stakes, real stakes. Set yeah. the best. Set the best and the worst aside. You know what I mean. Sound design is huge. Yeah. Yep. I feel like. And Go ahead, sorry, Huber. Uh, and lastly, uh, like a lot of horror, I, like I feel like there's always like one gimmick for like a lot of horror games. You know, like Ben, you were mentioning Eternal Darkness earlier, mm -hmm. um, or Outlast, the video camera. I feel like a lot <coughs> has fatal like, frame. Yeah, fatal frame, just like one cool element unique to its. I feel like the I feel like the controls also have to be just like almost good enough <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> i feel like horror games much like with horror movies the problem that so many of them run into is they're just like if we just have shit jump out at you people will dig it and that i hate that shit so yeah. much that's bad i love in both horror films and horror video games when you get something that really attaches you to it in one way or another, where, you know, whether it has exceptional atmosphere, a really clever gimmick, like you were saying, Uber, um, a really fascinating and well-told and relatable story, just just something like that, not just like boo-ha-ha. -ha. It's yeah. easier, faster, cheaper, and it still makes as much or more money. Yeah. It just bums yeah. me out. Yeah. That's the thing about horror is it's like, there is this like much lower bar of budget yeah. So, hey, it works. Lots of people are gonna like it. Uh, is there any like really 
it's funny with all the zombie games that are out there like i don't feel like there's like a really good game where like it puts you in the mind of somebody becoming a zombie like, i feel like there could be something that that works there yeah like slowly changing into a zombie right like that instead of like cool. it'd be like the inverse of like other games where you get all these upgrades you just like yeah. keep losing abilities keep getting the whole worse game. oh my god that's <laughs> wow, actually that's kind of a cool genius game. love that all right oh and if it's survival horror it has to have a good shotgun has to don't have a good shotgun See you later. Dude, I, I want more pure survival horror. Like, not just not just this, like, first-person stuff jumps out of you stuff. I want, like, I want to sweat my inventory and my bullets. Yes. And I, that, there, there are survival games that do that, but I want horror, more horror experiences like that, please. Some more of my favorites. Ever, 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 ever. Um, next one comes in from Corey Jackson. If you were an NPC in the next FF7 remake part, uh, what would you be and where would you show up at? Dude. Gold Saucer. Gold Saucer, baby. Oh, we're all at Gold Saucer. Ooh. Yeah, I'm at the Chocobo <laughs> races, for sure. I want to be like a stressed out person who's been robbed. Can I please be... Don's chocobo jockey. Yes. Don <laughs> is my and Wait. I'm just stressing out trying to win a race to please Don. Yes. John <laughs> Don has has like eight chocobo jockeys. Like we're all <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're all just as, <laughs> and I'm the kid who's trying to get Gashel greens. I would give anything for Don to be in a skit. And he just comes in and he goes, gas him up with greens. <laughs> yeah. Ray Luaza says that they're the dumpster next to the kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, next question comes in from Robert Lee. Good day, allies. What are some of the best mods you have used to enhance your gaming experience? Some essential mods for me include the 7th Heaven for Final Fantasy 7 PC uh, it includes HD visuals, arranged mm -hmm. soundtracks, among others. XCOM 2, the Long War mod, and Divinity Sin Original 2 overhaul crafting mod. Shout out to all nude mods, of course. Of course. Uh, I mean, the Silent Hill Enhanced Edition is just like oh, god yeah, that tier. Looked really cool. it, it's insane. Yeah. And the amount of work. Oh, ugh. Um, there's a pretty impressive KOTOR 2 mod that restores the lost content of that game. Mm. which is really sick. The, the FF9 mod that Jason had me use was really cool. Um, the Matrix. best mod I ever used, though, is uh, Dragon Age Origins, replacing the spiders with tiny little, tiny little dinosaurs. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Max Payne Matrix. Um. Uh, cos oh, I mean, I like good cosmetic ones, too, that like RE2 and RE3 on PC, they've made some really good alt outfits for the characters. Hmm. Um, Just say it, Damiani. We know you're talking about nude mods. No, uh, Jill has a battle suit Jill, like the RE5 outfit. Mm -hmm. They nude gave her like suit. that. Nude battle suit, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what was the... Uh, yeah, they've given her like more like... like They've done like different like casual outfits for her as well to like replace her like the fault one. Like there's one of her with like a now a jacket and stuff like they're, they're like they don't look cheap is what i want to say like they look right. like capcom made them and it's like that's pretty good yeah like re2 like for leon they have some really co cool like uh they give him like as re you can get the re4 jacket and everything so you can make it look like re4 leon it looks really awesome um yeah they, they've just done really good cosmetic mods with those two and then obviously you know you can replace nemesis and uh, mr x with other funny fun stuff Shout out to Thomas the Tank Engine, like every game. Yeah. Just in those. Also in Final Fantasy XV, Thomas the Tank Engine is really good. Some of the hardest I've ever laughed at a mod. It's an old one and a well-known one, but the Macho Man Randy Savage Dragon mod in Skyrim is so fucking funny to me. 
Have you guys seen this? Classic, yeah. That's okay. a classic. Uh, I, I might have. All time There's so classic. many Skyrim mods. Yeah. It's it's worth watching. Yeah. And Skyrim's oh, probably yeah. the only, only game that I have modded, but I think I just did, like, really, like, basic quality of life stuff and, like, better water or something like that. Shout out to Minecraft mods. <laughs> They're a million. Yeah. Yeah, dude, those Minecraft nude mods. So good, so nude. When they finish at the RE4 HD restoration project. They're just finishing character models, but everything else in that looks freaking amazing. Way better than Capcom's Resident Evil 4 HD. Bummer for them if the remake happens. <laughs> they said they weren't dissuaded. Well, but... I mean, but this, yeah, because this will be preserving the OG version, like, yeah. in, like, the best HD remaster effort, so that's pretty good. Uh, chat just brought up a good one. The one that uh, the mod that replaces "You Died" with "Thanks Obama." That's a funny that's one. Pretty good. <laughs> um. Oh yeah! One. Shout out! Shout out to the to the mod that just made uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines just work. <laughs> yeah, any mod that makes life easier for sure. Yeah, just wouldn't play without it. <laughs> Uh, next question comes in from MGS Junkie uh, with a quote. We're starting off with a quote. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The realist adjusts the sails. William yeah, Arthur Ward. Remember to stay true to yourself, easy A, in this time of change. Don't let the wind, parentheses, internet opinion, control your past to the point of forgetting your identity. Continue to adjust the sails in the direction of staying true to the easy A identity. You've all worked so hard to make easy A what it is today, so please don't let the wind... Uh, slash internet opinion blow you off your path. Good words of encouragement. Always. The only thing that'll blow us off the path is the monetary opinion of Patreon. <laughs> 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 Our last question comes in from Brandon. Brandon White, he says, Hello, allies. If you could start your life over, is there a skill slash talent or hobby you'd want to get better at or wish you started at an earlier age? Drawing. I have two that I feel very passionately about. Um, secretly, I just wish I was a sick lead guitarist in a heavy metal band, so guitar skills and uh, being fluent in Japanese. I wish that was also true. <laughs> That's funny because, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of right there with you. I think, like, yeah, music and language, both, if I had had earlier starts that followed through. Yeah. Both things that I think I probably would be better at. Yeah, I wish I'd pushed a little harder on going all the way with, like, Spanish versus being, like, this weird, like, half-fluent-ish type weird spot where it's not really fluent with it, where it could have been. And then, yeah, I would have wanted to learn, like, be, mo learning multiple languages is not one. Like, I would have put that, like, as a high priority because that's, like, I mean, Japanese, because if I stayed with this profession, obviously it would have been Japanese, but... I mean, I would have picked at least two languages, and then uh, more more science stuff. Maybe not math, because I think I'm just like how I am. Like no matter what I've done, I would never have been able to get into math like as much as you know some people would have wanted me to in my family. But science, like I've always been really into science, and like especially anything to do with you know exploring space or just like exploring the planet and stuff and. I feel like that could have been something, you know, I always think about like something I could have done that would have been like more useful to like the future and stuff. And it's like, hmm, yeah, if I was the thing when I think about restarting things like, yeah, I can do something that might actually contribute and not let's be like, yeah, just having fun being in entertainment industry. Yay. You do contribute, Damiani. Like contribute more. <laughs> like not, I don't know. I feel like I have that like guilt sometimes feel no guilt yeah. there's a place for the dreamers of dreams damiani mm, yes it is true guys yeah, I think can, that's, I, oh. can we respect yeah Jack. Can we how, respect? Do we, how do i respect what's the Book of reincarnation? <laughs> can i put more into int <laughs> <laughs> don't you wish it was like like 14 where you could just like get a a new stone and just like just D &D or something. Yeah, yeah like just can i have my stat sheet can I just yeah. like oh, please. Pump it all great. into strength yeah <laughs> 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 
That is going to do it. Thank you to the allies who joined me. Ian Hink, Michael Huber, Daniel Bloodworth, Michael Damiani. Uh, thank you to everybody who's watching this live or on VOD. Uh, the Next time we will do a Q&A, it'll be at the end of the month. And uh, there will be a post letting you know when we're submitting, when we're taking submissions. And then an actual submissions post where you can submit your questions. If you want to submit, that is a $25 tier on Patreon. You can find more at patreon.com slash easyallies. And... Uh, we will be back in just a little bit for the group stream. Predator. Two hours. All right. Bye, everyone.